This podcast features adult content not suitable for listeners under the age of 18. You have been warned. The name's Ellery. Just Ellery, thank you very much. A bit short and stocky for a half-elf, with dark hair that I keep severely tamed. I prefer to blend into the background. My bright blue eyes are the only thing that draw much attention, at least at first glance. Though I've never been physically imposing, I've learned that a few sharp words and a well-placed glare will let people know when I fucking mean business. Abandoned in an Embershore alleyway as an infant, I was adopted by the half-orc tavern owner who found me. And all I've ever wanted is to be recognized as the loyal daughter that I am. First to my mother, and then, after she disappeared, to the man I've always looked up to as my father. In order to work my way up the ranks of his organization and prove myself worthy of becoming his right hand, I've honed my skills as a thief. But the sudden manifestation of wild magic has fucked up my life and shit on all of my plans. After a harrowing stint in Embershore's prison, I've begun to question my own usefulness, and the path ahead of me. But I am certain of one thing. I must claim mastery over this magic that surges through me, before it claims mastery over me. I am Bo, of the mountain. I am hard to miss, because I am so big, and my kind, half ruined are not common here. A runic marking covers my chest, fiery and red, like the fire giant ancestry flowing through me. I do not know if my parents live, but I had lived alone in the wilderness for many years. The orphanage in Embershore has helped introduce me to common folk, but this town's not my home. I am imposing, but harmless, unless you harm my friends. I have been granted many second chances in life, and with the help of Aain, I wish to give those that are lost a second chance to redeem themselves too. Hello, my name is Melly Forsky. I am 18 years old, and I am average height for a human, I think. I have ginger curly hair and grey eyes, although people tend to notice my glasses more as they're quite big because, well, I need them to see. I originally grew up in White Guard, but my family moved to Embershaw when I was young so that my father could establish a trade line between the two uh, for the company that he works for. I assist him using my knowledge of Arcana with identifying magic items for trade. When I moved here, I started studying magic under philosopher Mobius and found that I actually have quite a knack for it. He recently passed away though, so now I mainly spend time in the library teaching myself. I have quite a lovely group of friends, which, to be honest, I don't know how, so I'm a bit awkward to talk to. Um, I'd follow them to the end of the earth, though, uh, although doing so has gotten me in trouble on more than one occasion. Hey, my name is Calvin, son of Klein. I'm about average height for a half-orc, but I'm built like any other blacksmith you know. I have all the skin and dark hair that I don't like to fuss over so I try to keep it short, and I'm told I wear a perpetual frown. I was raised on my family's farm just outside of Embershore, but once old enough, I began working under Donovan in the Amber Forge. Life has a tendency to throw direwolf one's way, and I found myself needing a different kind of strength. That's when I joined the Unhollowed and trained as a dark hunter. A fire burns in my veins, my heart an anvil ever alive, Pounding and shaping a will to do, well, something. I hope to uncover what life has waiting for me and will jump at any chance to tug on the strings of fate. I am Vesper. Vesper Fidelis. It's obvious from first glance that I'm not quite human. I'm tall and lithe, with pale, grey-blue skin, and markings on my fingers that look like I've dipped them in ink or soot. My eyes have been described as the colour of quicksilver, and to keep my jet black hair in a tight braid. As you may have guessed, I am a Genasi, born to a man with an Afriti ancestor and an heir Genasi. Unfortunately, my mother died when I was still an infant, but my father remarried a few years later to a paladin of Aiyin, 
goddess of redemption. I.E. developed an early fascination for medicine and healing, and so my new father took me under his wing, and I have been following in his footsteps most of my life. I admit, I'm a bit emotionally tone-deaf and mostly focused on my own goals and desires. I strive to be better every day than I was the day before, and I work hard to hone my skills with medicine, magic, and blades. My father and I recently completed a temple to Aiyin, just outside the walls of Embershore, where I serve as a healer to the sick and wounded. It's all I've ever wanted. However, I do find the thrill of adventure a little addictive, which I discovered because my friends have a knack for getting themselves into trouble, and I have a knack for keeping them alive. Although I tend to fixate on self-improvement, at the end of the day, there are only three things that truly matter to me. My family, my friends, and my faith. My name is Amson Armsblossom. I was born in an unremarkable town called Deadwood, to an elven mother and a human father. Although I got most of my mother's ancestry, I did manage to inherit some of my father's red hair. Despite my father's insistence that I learn the secrets of blacksmithing, I decided to follow in my mother's footsteps down the path of artistry, music, and storytelling. My family and I moved to Embershaw when I was still a child, where I met friends of all different backgrounds and honed my skills as a teller of tales. Always with a smile on my face, I look for a chance to learn about epic tales of glory, dramatic tales of tragedy, and simple, encouraging words to tell my friends and the strangers that we meet across our path. Hello, and welcome to this episode of Back to the Story, where friends come together to play Dungeons and Dragons. I'll be your DM, Klaus. Let's get started. I changed all the previous chapters to prologues, so this is chapter one. Years later, Embershore, Severwind, Fifth Long Night, which is like January, February, winter, Third Era, year 621, and the current year 627. Uh, years have passed by, and many things have changed. You've all grown both physically and mentally, most notably Ball, who has grown to 10 feet. The copper sale is starting to get busy as folks get done with work. Uh, you've all found your uh, sitting at what has become your sta standard table to the side of the bar, where you have a view out the window, where you can see snow flurries beginning to form, uh, moving sideways in the high winds. Uh, as you all begin to discuss what's changed during the last four years uh, together, uh, how you've grown together. Uh, I'm walking pretty slowly when I approach the table. Not really meeting anybody's eyes at this point, but I just drop into a chair and then I look around at all of you. Look who's alive. May I be the first to say that you look terrible? Oh, thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Always what? the charmer, Amson. What happened? <laughs> well, I've been enjoying the hospitality of the Covenant for the last, oh, well, better part of a year. What did if you? If that's what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> uh. You didn't kill anybody, did you? No, I didn't kill anybody. Did you get caught stealing again? What do you mean again? I've never been caught stealing before. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. What did what did you do? Please, t please tell us. <sighs> Exploded some furniture. What? <laughs> <sighs> okay, so here's what happened. I was, <sighs> so yeah, I was breaking into somebody's house. There wasn't supposed to be anybody there. I had a little accident with a lockpick and then a bigger accident with one of those fucking wild magic surges. And it turned out the house wasn't so empty after all. And I just 
fold my arms in front of me and glare at everyone. As you're glaring, there's suddenly a doosh as someone slams a bottle of liquor onto the table, kind of in the midst of y'all, mostly in front of Ellery. Uh, you look up to see the arm holding it um, as Goldsmith, or Goldsmith? That's Gold. his last name, Goldsmith. Oh, Goldsmith, okay. I was like, is it Goldhammer? No, Gold, Goldsmith, as he slams the bottle down um, and kind of just wraps his arms around him. <laughs> and he kind of says into your ear, welcome home. Hey. I knew what it was like. Drink up. You'll get better. Thanks. I, um... I kind of fucked up, didn't I? Yes. Yeah, you did. You fucked up. (laughs) But I've been there. And I bet you won't do that again. Yeah, certainly not planning on it. Good. Have a drink. Take a few days. We'll talk afterwards. All right. You it's kinda, good to be home. I'm glad you are. He kind of uh, has a few glasses in his other hand. He places them onto the table, pours you a drink. Um, it's not shit whiskey, but it's probably, it looks like mid tier. <laughs> he pours it the entire bottle he leaves on it. Kind of pats you and gives you a quick hug one more time before going back to the very busy bar. Let's roll with trigger to fucking up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll drink that. <laughs> and I take my first drink in a long time. Make Calvin, here you <laughs> Being in prison for that long, you definitely need a constitution save. <laughs> 16. You take it down like a champ, actually. It feels, it feels, it burns in a good way. It's cold outside. Uh, it's warm in here, but it's cold outside, and you feel that burn going down your chest. Kind of wince and closes your eyes, and as it gets down, you open them up again, um, and you kind of feel it in your ears already. As you guys are kind of clinking and pouring glasses for the rest of the the group, uh, suddenly there's a loud boosh, and you hear. A of wind rushing in through the front door as well as a uh, very snow flurry says the uh, the blizzard outside has gotten worse um, you see uh, a stranger that quickly comes in turn and <laughs> slams the door closed um, this tall man the face is hooded by uh, the pelt of a black wolf kind of turns around as his clanking armor as he moves on his waist you see this serrated blade of a long hunting sword the stranger kind of surveys the room looks around and looks directly at y'all's group. A wide grin creeps across his face as he begins to step forward directly towards you. Uh oh. Somebody wants us. Do we have an extra glass? <laughs> Do we want to invite this person to our table? I don't recognize them. I think he's inviting himself. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> he's a few inches over six foot um, and as he's moving over you see um, something on the side of his shoulder of his armor something gleaming um, a metal of some sort almost this orangey bronzy color um, as he steps forth and you see as he stands and gets to the front of your table you can see he has this kind of dull greenish gray skin um, two t- um, tusks that kind of point out. You can see the top part of his face is still shrouded in shadow as he stands uh, just a foot out of the um, from the table. Does he look kind of imposing? Or I would say so. Yeah. Okay. He's so maybe as he gets as shoulder. he gets this close, then um, I'll put down my drink and just kind of straighten up my shoulders and kind of look bigger than him. Ball, do you stand up? Um, yeah, let's say I do. I'll, I'll stand up and face him. Okay. So you stand up from your chair, which is actually just... Um, Goldsmith actually just got a stump of a big tree to use because no chair would hold you. So you're just standing on, sitting on the stump. You've got to stand to your full height you, where your head almost scrapes the ceiling. It's kind of right at the top. You have maybe an inch before you hit. 
um, kind of standing up to look down at this individual who seems unfazed. Can we help you? It's good to see you again. <laughs> For the love of every single god on the entire <laughs> universe and all the planes of existences. <laughs> Calvin? Can I just yes. say, what the fuck? Uh, what? I certainly wasn't expecting to see you today. Well, that's a fine how do you do? <laughs> You certainly made a. I'm gonna pull his head off. Yes, please sit down. (laughs) You gave a wonderful entrance. Uh, That was interesting. (laughs) You freaked me out. (laughs) Oh, um, the worms out of here too. uh, Oh, sorry. I tried to close the door as fast as I could. So, how long has it been since the last time you were here? Uh. I'm not so sure. To be honest with you, it's been a while. If that's your answer, then it's been too long. I'll toast to that. Sit down, Calvin. Uh, Melly's not here yet, but uh, it's good for at least most of us to be back in one place again. While they're talking, can I go up to the bar and get another glass for Calvin? You part the crowd. Um like Moses. They kind of all kind of step to the side um, as you kind of just uh, waltz through. You kind of get to the bar. They kind of look over at you. you One more glass, please. All right, yeah. Then you see the uh, the man behind it. Um, a tall, burly guy with a man bun. He would be pretty to look at if his beard wasn't so unkempt. Um, but he quickly kind of grabs a, a glass, kind of slams it down. You see most of the bar uses like pewter mugs, um, but he grabs another glass for you. He kind of goes back to filling mugs and uh, throwing dirty, dirty ones in a sink. All right, and then I'll walk back to the table with the glass. Um, and as I do, I don't know what our sitting arrangement is, but maybe as I do, I'll kind of, um, like with my hand, kind of glance over, glance isn't the right word, graze over um, Ellery's shoulder. Um, and using my, like, detect poison and disease, um, combined with my lay on hands. I just want to kind of see if there's some kind of um, divine healing I can give her if she's looking kind of like malnourished or something. Okay. Um, make a medicine check for me. I flinch a little bit when he does this. Uh, 12. Okay. Just to, as you're kind of pushing in to, to sense if there's any sort of poison or disease or anything like that, you can tell she's maybe malnourished, probably needs just a few days of eating and some good sleep, um, some warmth, sunshine, uh, but she's not infected with anything. There's no kind of evil disease or spirit that she's affected by. You could maybe lay on hands and make her feel better, uh, but she just kind of needs some rest, some food. Sure. I think uh, when she flinches, I'll kind of, I'll put in a point of lay on hands into her just for the feel better effect. And, uh, Maybe just kind of, I guess, like, when you flinch, do you kind of just turn around and see what the hell is touching you kind of thing? Yeah. Okay. So I'll just look to you and kind of give you a, kind of like a pleased nod, and then sit down at the table. I am trying very hard not to tear up right now and just act like everything's totally chill. So, Calvin, I'm sure you've got plenty of stories from your whatever you do. Up top. Good, I'm afraid. Can't let you know anything about it. Mm-hmm. If you told us, you'd have to kill sure. us, that kind sure. of thing. Mm-hmm. Twice, actually. It's, uh, it's very formal. Ah. <laughs> happened. I understand. No, it's really been, I mean, it's what you think. It's hunting, just not rabbits. Do we even want to ask what you've been hunting? I bet there's a good story in there, too. Yeah, if you, if, if you have a good story about your heroics, you kind of have to tell me, Calvin. <laughs> <laughs> Amazon's work is getting a little stale. Oh, come on now. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't been too heroic since the last time we've been together, so nothing, nothing new to report on that end. That's kind of disappointing, but oh well. We'll, we'll have an adventure soon enough. Is that elf still crazy? Yes. Yeah. Very much yes. 
how do you live with her? I mean, honestly, I wouldn't be able to sleep knowing I'm in the same roof as her. Luckily, I don't have to all the time. She goes out a lot, so... Calvin dips into some of those potions and poisons that What's Her Face makes all the time. You know, knock them out every night. <laughs> so you can have something in our letters. How uh, I got one? Was there more? Probably not after a while, but I think at least the first we used to send you a bunch. <laughs> I would have sent at least two. I would have tacked on a couple of short notes at the bottom of other people's letters. <laughs> P.S. Ellery says hi. Pretty much. Oh, I thought that was just other people trying to make me feel like I was important to Ellery. Awkward. And <laughs> for for Calvin, you you came back a few times at the first year, year and a half. But then the last two years, you really haven't been to... Um, Ember Shore at all. You haven't seen your friends at all. Um, you know, don't really know what they've been up to. Uh, Ball certainly grown a few feet. Ellery kind of looks worse for wear. Actually, Amson, are you wearing your coat? Yeah. And Amson's in a very fine looking coat that looks, how does it currently look, Amson? A very uh, fine looking coat of very high quality. But these these people that you kind of grew up with and know so well. Right now, it doesn't, like, the fabric itself doesn't look, like, super fancy or anything, but it's got, like, gold trim all over the place. It's kind of like a brownish, tannish kind of coat, but then it's got, like, the threads that it's made out of is gold. Okay, so very nice, like, accents, it looks like. Yeah, Would yeah. I have seen this coat before? Um, he's had it for a while. If he's worn it before or actually okay. yeah he got it before you were locked up okay yeah yeah well you all are looking uh in varying degrees of all right uh what have y'all been up to it's been a while no they're just the same old story for me performing for people they pay me sometimes every sometimes pays me in alcohol that's about it uh, my father friend got the temple set up, so Bob and I have been there most of the time. You see, you're just ball naughty with the story. And I just take a drink. Oh, well, that, that's that's really well, guys. I'm super, super glad to see you again. Um, uh, I know it's been a while. Um, I'll just, uh, why don't I uh, bust these out? Um, uh, I know it, it's like I said, been a while. Um, I kind of missed you last year, um, but hopefully make up with this year. Uh, I brought presents. What? That's for like lights up immediately. <laughs> Calvin, you didn't need uh, to do that. Well, I mean, it's nice anyways. It's just sure one did. of those sure things. He, he hasn't seen us in a while. It's a good, <laughs> good gesture. <laughs> It's just one of those things that you're that's you're just obligated to say when somebody gives you a gift, right? You know. <laughs> We're very See, grateful. Anson sometimes knows how to be polite. Um, you never know if it's on purpose or not. <laughs> um, as Calvin pulls these things out, um, that are kind of wrapped in a cloth and kind of opens them up, and you see a pile of several of these, these very shining, uh, bronze looking, uh, pieces. They're all about maybe the size of a hand. And as you kind of quickly glance around, you see they, resembles the same thing that's on his shoulder. Uh, and as it kind of clicks in your mind, it's a bronze scale, similar in size and shape of the scale that was used to patch up uh, Orsisa, Orsisa's wound. Uh, but it's made of bronze. It's a little thinner, not as heavy. Um, you do see uh, five of them. Calvin, what is this? Um, I thought it would be a nice reminder, kind of something that uh, we all bonded over. An event, and uh, you mean diving off of a cliff a... after a dragon, <laughs> breaking all of your bones? Yeah, half of us trying to pull the other half out from the water as we almost drowned. Ah, good memories, good memories. And then Melly, exciting times. Melly jumped off after us because <laughs> she showed up late. <laughs> I reach out towards one of them and then stop. 
I'll grab one. Did oh, you? As as grabs them, I grab one. <laughs> did, did, as you'll grab them and hold them closer in your hand, you do see there's like three holes on them where it looks like you could uh, bond them either through metal or cloth um, onto something as a metal patch. Did you make these, Calvin? Yeah. They're very nice. And I actually pick one up. my heart to do it, so. Things are always better when you put your heart into them. I've only trained as a blacksmith for years before leaving us. I don't okay. think Calvin doesn't put his heart into anything. Of all his strong muscles, his heart is the strongest. <laughs> good God. He, he's got that good cardio going. He goes for a run every day. No, really, though, Calvin, these are very, very nice. And I know I appreciate them. I don't know about everybody else. That's for sure. Kind of tying it onto whatever I she has. <laughs> just don't know where to put it. <laughs> well, you have a fancy coat. I'm not sure if I want to put it on this fancy coat, though. It's um, well, I I just don't want to damage it. Let's put it that way. And the coat or the, the scale? The coat. I'll be honest. I don't want to put holes in this coat. I don't know what'll happen. Sorry, what? Uh, instead of brownish tan, my jacket turns red. You see it suddenly shifts as if uh, octopus or chameleon, and you see the color uh, spreads throughout the uh, coat until it's that reddish color. It's kind of magical. I don't want to touch it. And here I thought I just th- that you just had a bunch of identical coats. Uh, no. It's just the one. But yeah, I I don't want to put holes in it just in case it breaks the enchantment on it. Where did you get that? That's uh, quite impressive. Somebody really liked my performing and gave it to me as a present. That must have been quite the performance. Yeah, on a on a scale of 1 to 20, it was a 20. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Honestly, it took me a second. I was like, why, 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 did, he do okay. <laughs> why did he pick such an arbitrary number? Usually it's like five or ten. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, I guess, like while everyone's fawning over Anson's jacket, um, Ball's kind of fiddling with the scale. And at some moment of silence, maybe this one, um, Ball will look over to Calvin and say, uh, mm. What did they teach you? Uh, they taught me how to use. Uh, my senses in a way that I couldn't before. Um, I can track better. I can use what's inside me to fuel my energy, my attacks. What do you I'm just notice? a real fancy hunter, really, is all it is. What is your fuel? Uh, me. I am my own battery. Hmm. And Ball looks back down at the scale and just kind of fidgets with it and then gets bored of fidgeting with it and just like puts it into his pocket. Or not bored of fidgeting, but when he's done fidgeting with it, he puts it in his pocket and doesn't say anything else. You alright, big guy? Yeah, Ball looks at you and just kind of gives you a, the usual nod he would give you. So I kind of I know that I can't actually see it, but I try, kind of like try and look at my own shoulder to where I have the tattoo and see how closely it matches up. But I can't actually see it. I'll turn and show her my shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just show her mine. <laughs> All right, and I just hold it up and for a little side by side comparison. They're they're pretty close in in size and shape. Pretty similar. Of course. Yeah, you're gonna have to help me figure out where to put this. Okay. Now, I was talking to Vesper, Calvin. I mean, uh... I trust her fashion sense more than yours. Let's be honest here. So, Calvin, how long are you in town? Um, I don't really know. Um, I was told to come home, visit. By the time I was done, uh, they, I, uh, I'd be ready, or they'd be ready for me. Ready for you to do what? Uh, not quite sure yet. As usual, it looks like Calvin is the catalyst that facilitates our adventures. <laughs> uh... What? You're the reason why we get in trouble sometimes. You'd think it would be yeah, me. Yeah, sorry about that. But No, it's it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, Calvin. Take it as a compliment. 
I mean, that is kind of the point behind the scale, isn't it? It was my thinking, anyway. When the hell is Melly supposed to get here? I don't know. Did anybody invite her? her? Yes, I told her this morning. Her father's probably keeping her in. I'm sure. Make sure not to mention Ellery. So, you know, can't use that. (sighs) So, how much do you think Melly's parents hate me at this point? Um, immeasurably. Um, wait, what? Why? Why would... Why would they hate you? Ellery's been locked in the slammer for the last, like, eight <sighs> months. Thank you for that, Wow. Answer. You're welcome. Very tactful. <laughs> I just thought you'd gone on some weird diet or something. Nope. Not by choice. And I just sit back and don't look straight at him. She's back now. That's all that matters. Yeah. It's good to have you back, Ellery. Aren't we welcoming Calvin back? We're kind of welcoming Cal- everyone back. back. It's just a great big welcome party. Yeah. <laughs> welcome Ellie when she gets her too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Welcome back to the land of real life. I know that Ellie's you... been locked up in the library, I suppose. More than likely. Hey, she loves the books. Better her than me. You don't like books, Ellery? <laughs> I don't have a problem with books. It's just the kind of books that Melly likes. Oh, I don't have yeah. the patience for them. Yeah, no, no, no. And oh, Ellery's a bit flammable. I don't think she should be around books. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that that's a terrible <laughs> mental image. Just burnt and destroyed books. It makes me sad. Has not happened yet. <laughs> Let's hope it never happens. Yeah. Well, Melly's books aren't all bad. I... Did a bit of research with her past few months. Couldn't find much, but no. No, I prefer a good. She's been reading about dragons. (laughs) God damn it! (laughs) That thing where everybody wants to talk. Two guys. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Where everybody wants to talk all at the same time, and they're like, "No, Mm, uh, you you go 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 first." (laughs) It's like when you walk into somebody and you like can't figure out which one to go. Oh no, no, no! You first. No, you first. Oh no, I insist. (laughs) Well, I prefer a book with a good story to it. This is why you sit here and listen to me every single day. Well, at least not for the last eight months, but yes. I sit here and listen to you because you're here. <laughs> Ooh. And I can't get rid of you. Oh, <laughs> well, you have an, an all right story every once in a while. Oh, you're just slaying me. I only hear the same thing five times apart for three old. <laughs> But I was hoping Calvin would have some tales of adventure. I know. Honestly, I was kind of hoping that Calvin would have some stories as well. I'm kind of running out of material. Actually, I have a little bit, but it's I'm no storyteller. Um, uh, I did a little bit of research talking about reading books um, on the Valgrith um, that we met oh, way back. That horrible, disgusting beast. Met is an right. odd word to use for that thing. What word would you use? Uh, ran screaming from, perhaps? Well, um, yeah, that's kind of what you would use when you're talking about a the local chupacabra that people run away from and tell their children at night to make sure that they don't go and do stupid things after the sun goes down. What's a chupacabra? Sounds nasty. Uh, it's a different... Chupacabra. Never mind. Don't worry about it. <laughs> like it. Anyways. Um, no, that thing was actually terrifying. And we nearly died. Anyway, so, Calvin, you were doing research on that? Well, um, I mean, it's a thing that's been around for a while and seemed like a good opportunity to see how to take care of it, right? Dealing with people that hunt monsters. We already knew it was a curse, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, Basically, whoever killed it would become the next one. Right. Um, ex- Unless, you, uh, what I read says, if you uh, consume the heart of the beast before after you kill it, it'll end the curse. That actually sounds like it would do the opposite. Yeah. That sounds like it would just make you even more worse off. Don't tell me you consumed that thing's heart after you killed it. Uh, I haven't 
killed it yet. Oh, wait, yet? Well, I mean, I'm not going to just not, right? I know how to kill it. It's something that bothers our home. So I guess we now know what he's going to be dragging us into. Yep. Right. Oh, we have to make sure he kills it, because I'm not eating the heart. <laughs> Is there a time limit? Can I cook it first? No, I don't really know. Uh, Calvin's got better teeth for it. As you're kind of discussing what you guys have been through um, and what you found out and learned over the years, uh, everyone go ahead and give me a perception check. The bar's definitely gotten busier, um, whether it's from, pe- from people getting off of work or just people trying to get out of the blizzard, find some warm food. My first nat 20 with this dice. Five. 23 total. 23 total. Uh, yeah. I got a big old 10. Nice. Uh, so, ball with a 19. Um, both 23s, Ellery uh, and Calvin. The others don't hear anything just through the crowd. Um, but the other three of you, you'll hear... It's hard to hear just... Between the crowd, the wind outside is constantly just whistling, uh, but you hear horns, the covenant horns, just three horns right in a row. A few seconds go by and you hear it again. Could you remind us what the covenant is? Yeah, the covenant are the guard of Embershore. Um, That's what the guards are called. Uh, they typically wear medium or heavy armor that's almost always adorned in bone of some sort. That's sort of a the decorative marker uh, for them. Do we have an idea of what the horns mean? The horns are generally um, horns of warning. Something's going on. Uh, something's either attacking or approaching or something along those lines. Did you hear that? Uh, Alvin what? gets up and rushes to the, the door. Calvin's going. Covenant horns. Yeah, Calvin's going to open the door. (laughs) Shit. You open the door. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't. uh, I wasn't waiting. I was going. Okay, Calvin. Calvin's a a good bit, a few feet ahead of y'all. As you open the door, immediately wind, snow comes in. You hear, "I close that door." Several people in the crowd just yelling at you um, as you rush out. Uh, Calvin's out first. Who, Who follows? I do. Amson, uh, Vesper. Maybe Ball will be last here. Okay. I, right. I will I will or, fight you for last. Okay. So Ball and Ellery take their I'll time. I'll hold the door for you. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you see this like uh, this kind of shorter dwarf that looks angry and pissed off because the, all the cold is coming in. He's coming stomping over to confront whoever's leaving the goddamn door open. They see his ball and just kind of like turns and goes to the bar and orders another drink. <laughs> <laughs> this 10 foot half ruined, half giant man. Uh, but y'all eventually make it out as well. You can hear the horns. Uh, it's very difficult through the wind. Um, you can kind of hear the horns towards the dock. Oh, it's so windy out. I'm just heading for the ducks. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so y'all you'll run quickly over there. Um as you're moving forward and getting closer, give me uh perception checks again. Perception. Fourteen. Eleven. Eleven. Yeah, eleven buddies. What was that ball? Yours? Four. Four? Okay. Uh, so everyone, it's a, it's very difficult to, to hear, uh, much of anything. You can kind of, as you're moving towards the docks, you can actually see, you know, there's two covenant here. It looks like, uh, four covenant there with a mounted one kind of quickly riding on their horse towards the dock. Um, it looks like there's a fair amount of guards converging towards the docks. As you hear the three horns blown, um, every few seconds you hear the three horns blown again. A few seconds go by as you get closer running through the market. If I recognize one of the Covenant, I want to stop them and ask what's going on. Uh, you don't recognize anyone in particular, but you there's one running right by you that you could certainly grab. Oh, gotcha. What, what what's the, going on? What the horns fight? Fucking no, the fucking horns going off. You can see he has his axe drawn. He's just kind of running towards there. The fuck are you doing out here? And he kind of there brushes are... you off and is running. I'll just, yeah, keep going then. 
Okay, so y'all run kind of through uh, the market, eventually making your way towards the harbor. Um, as you kind of overlook uh, down into the harbor, it's very difficult you can, to see through the blizzard, but you can kind of see the glowing of the ember stones along the coast, uh, kind of in, illuminating uh, the waves. Um, you can see several of the ships docked. Um, as you see uh, more and more covenant that are coming towards the docks, you can see them shouting. You can see others setting up like barricades of, of wood uh, all along the docks. And you see another ship is kind of out the shore. Um, you see normally you only see maybe one or two mounted covenant every now and then. It looks like you see eight in each of their squads that are all aligning at the docks. Uh, Balt's going to turn on his divine sense and try to... Uh sets out if whatever these horns are the reasoning for the horns if it has anything to do with something unholy or evil okay and that's a 30 foot range a 60 foot 60 foot range that is not behind total cover okay um so as you kind of use this sense uh, what does it look like when you use this sense does your holy symbol glow do you kind of bow your head i think maybe uh like my hand goes on my runes so the runes that i do have being half runed um those ones maybe start to kind of like the outline of them starts to kind of glow ever so slightly. And that's just kind of where I keep my hand while I'm feeling out my surroundings. Okay. So you tap into these senses. Um, and for a moment, the kind of loud whistling of the wind seems to mute out for a moment and become quiet um, as you're kind of pushing your senses beyond 60 feet out. You don't notice anything out of the ordinary. Nothing celestial or infernal or any sort of uh, weird thing pings on your mind as you're going to snap back into the wind once again. Uh, it's very difficult to hear. Any communication is through yelling, and you can hear the covenant yelling around. Um, a mounted uh, covenant rides up on his on his horse, this kind of salt and pepper gray horse. Says, what the fuck are you doing here? Get away from the docks. Kind of quickly, as the horse kind of rides off again closer to the docks, as you can see um, a ship um, that was out the shore is slowly making its way uh, towards the docks. Yeah, maybe we ought to listen to them. Oh, if someone gets injured, I don't know if you know this, but it's sort of my job to take care of that. Mm. It was too hot inside anyway. <laughs> we've got some. We've got some business to do, some people to save. You can see torches are being lit and carried by various covenant. The wind is blowing it sideways. They're having to halfway shield it from the wind just to keep it lit. Um, as they seem to be lighting uh, these braziers um, on one of the docks. Um, it's kind of a little bit separate from the rest of the ships um, as the ship begins to head towards that. And that's where the bulk of the covenant seem to be where they're setting up these uh, barricades. As you see this massive ship begin to head towards it. Um, it's a long ship. Wooden has two uh, heavy masts with these massive sails upon it. You can see the front uh, wooden section of the ship kind of comes up and curls um, in the form of some sort of serpent or dragon-like bestial monster entity as it's uh, floating towards the dock. Are pirate attacks a common thing? In, or, or, I mean, are we in, do we know of any like active war? Um, you don't know of any active war between nations, but you're in pirate territory. Yeah, you're in raiding territory, for sure. I guess uh, Calvin's just going to try to find a uh, where other, I guess, the Covenant are positioning themselves and just manning up, just okay. lining up with them. And you can see there, there's a significant amount. There's maybe 20, 30 men uh, and women, dwarves, humans, half-orcs that are all kind of lining up. Um, at, at the docks. You can see several of them are mounted carrying these long spears um, that are just kind of lining lining up and now they're kind of in this crutch point where the ship is kind of uh, getting close. It's now maybe within uh, 40, 50 feet. As you can see, uh, now you can start to see the outlines and silhouettes of individuals on the ship. Um, it's hard to tell what race they are from, from the distance, but they're all armored a lot of them are carrying these uh, rounded shields with various symbols painted on them. And you see them carrying various drawn weapons that are kind of standing at the helm. Like drawn, like as in as soon as they hit land, they're like one of those things where they're just at the gate waiting for the gate to open. Uh, their weapons are in their hands. Okay. And, and their shields are on their arms. 
I think um, Ball will kind of take Calvin's cue and also try to get to the front lines. Okay. Um, as you kind of push forward, you kind of some of the Covenant kind of turn as you're trying to push through their lines and just like, what the fuck are you doing here? Get the fuck out of here. Mm. And they, they visibly like kind of block you, although they're a little hesitant as you, you both are fairly large and Ball is definitely large. In the- I'll position myself out of their way with my crossbow. I'll beat it on the first uh, guy I can see. Okay. Or at least waiting for the first guy to do something. Somebody come at okay. it. And and they're you can yeah, you can take a beat and they're within range of your crossbow. Um as they're now getting forty, thirty feet, um, as they're actually pulling between two of the long docks that extend out into the ocean. You see now the the men are armored, weapons in hand, shields out, uh, but are kind of standing in relaxed stances. Uh, they don't seem concerned. The covenant, you can tell there's uh, electricity in the air, they're on edge. What is this? Um, and I'll, like, looking at one of the Covenant members, I'll point towards the boat. And he, he's, uh, this was the one that was kind of blocking you. Well, if you want to get yourself killed, fine. It's getting cold. He kind of, like, turns his shoulders to the side to allow you to kind of get past his line to get in, into the front. All right. Yeah, if he's not going to answer my question, I'll just step past him. He uh, he said King called. But that's oh, all okay. He said. Does that ring a bell to any of us? Or uh, any of me? Calvin, you would have... Both of y'all roll history checks, both Calvin and uh, Ball. And as you are kind of contemplating this and the ship is kind of coming in uh, to dock, the rest of you guys, uh, what are you guys doing? As you're kind of behind the Covenant line, what are you guys doing? I'm holding back for now. I don't want to get too close to the ship or to the Covenant. Uh, I'm going to be by... Uh, Calvin, but uh, I'm going to try to keep myself in a place where I can see Ball very clearly. Okay. Or as I'm clear just, as I I'm can. I'm kind of behind Ball, but I'm also behind the Covenant line. I'm not breaking through it. Okay. Okay. So the rest of you will kind of come behind the, the line. Uh, Amson next to Calvin. You can easily get a beat on Ball um, as he's um, a good f- three to four feet above everyone as the kind of ship comes in, drifts in. Um, as they get to the docks, all the Covenant are kind of on the land part. None are actually on the wooden docks they extend into the sea. Um, and as the ship kind of comes next by, you see several men jump off. Ropes follow as they begin tying on. A few moments later, a loud clang uh, clatters as a wooden boardwalk kind of slams from the ship onto the dock. As you see men kind of disembarking, forming this kind of shield wall along the, the dock. As men and women, um, all with uh, uh, several, a lot of the the front line have uh, war paint on their face. Several of them have like braided beards. Um, there's a woman in the front lines ball that you see that's kind of like um, right at the front, slender, tall woman uh, that has the sides of her head uh, shaved, and the rest kind of in this bobbing ponytail behind. This kind of has a a dagger in one hand and looks like a axe in the other. It's kind of dr- drawn, but to her side, down to the ground. And if I like take a peek back behind my shoulder, over my shoulders, um, I see the rest of the covenant is um, like, you know, swords and shields at the ready, ready to fight, kind of thing. Yeah, they're they're okay. at the ready. And you can see the cavalry is kind of lined up in one uh, distinct area now. Um, as you see, three horse horses kind of move forward towards the front. Okay, um, I'll draw my greatsword. Um, and kind of take a defensive stance. I think it's the technical term. I think is the parry. If, uh, like if I was doing an action, the parry action. action. Uh, I think dodge it's action, yeah. dodge action. But yeah, you're basically getting a defensive uh, stance with your great sword, ready to parry it away. Yeah, uh, exactly. As you see, these three horsemen kind of move forward. Um, several uh, more men kind of disembark off the ship. Uh, others you see are still on the ship uh, with bows, long bows that are aimed. Arrows notched at the ready. Um, you can see the tips of the arrows are flaming. As you see uh, other men kind of disembark, you actually see on the ships too. Uh, and there's there's people engaged with these contraptions. Looks like a large ballistica at the very front um, of the ship that kind of have some massive bolt cranked back, aimed at the Covenant lines. Um, as you see the shield wall on the docks kind of split and allow forth 
as the the female with this head of her the sides of her head shade the temples um, as a, a man kind of parts between the shield wall standing out walking a good 10 15 feet beyond his own shield wall he kind of walks for forward um, he's in these heavy leather pants you can see wild hair kind of whipping in the wind you see this uh, long beard um, you can see around his neck are various chains necklaces you can see the glint of metal in his hands as well and you see in his hands uh, a very large uh, axe um, he's kind of just holding to the side uh, not quite in attack stance but he has it ready as he kind of steps forward um, you see the the three horsemen uh, one of them parts and moves forward a covenant clearly an officer a leader of some sort as the two kind of meet and converge in the front as the wind of the blizzard is whipping around they seem to be uh, talking or communicating it's hard to you cannot hear what they're saying they're, they're too far away and the blizzard is too loud um maybe i'll look back at the covenant and say uh who are they the raiders they raided a village north of here not too long ago i'm glad they're not coming after us oh yeah they're gonna winter here bullshit no they're not and you see various covenant are kind of talking about these raiders um that apparently raid villages um and they're kind of all discussing this and they're kind of and uneasy about their presence here is the conversation yeah. on the docks. They, they have been allowed to enter here before. I mean, is that something that's common for the town? Um, with your history check, you're not you're not sure. You know they're raiders, but you're not sure of, about that. You can't recall. I just, I, I, I mean, I just as far as I mean, yeah, like like that's something that wouldn't just be like a natural, like oh hey, raiders are are staying at our home for the winter. Uh, that's unusual in general. Yes, that is, okay, that that's, is that's, not that's, that's a normal thing. Yeah, the the conversation kind of seems to continue, and eventually the the man uh, who who you can now see kind of as he's gotten closer has a uh, a crown around his head that sparkles. It's hard to see the details of uh, some sort of crown as he kind of slaps the horse and kind of begins to walk forward uh, past the horseman as the the leader of the covenant, it seems, or some officer of some sort, turns the horse and begins. They both begin to go back towards the lines. The tall man, he's probably six, five, six, six, broad shouldered, shirtless in the wind. Um, Harry uh, chess as he gets closer, and the covenant just kind of part with the horseman and kind of walk forward. At this point, you can see from the ship the kind of all the men seem to kind of loosen up a little bit, relax a little bit. They're still on guard, but uh, various chests. And boxes and crates and barrels begin to be unloaded from the ship. You can see uh, usually uh, two men or two raiders are carrying these large chests that kind of <laughs> clang around. You can hear various uh, metals or, or who knows what is are in these chests as they're dragging them on the shore. And so as, here, maybe it'll we'll be safe. Um, it'll be foolish to make enemies of your bedfellows. As uh, as one of the uh, the chest comes down, it's a, a fairly large chest, maybe four by two feet large chest, uh, maybe a foot high or so. Um, the two men kind of drag it towards the uh, crowned man, the raider, um, who kind of drop it right next to him at his, as his feet. He kicks it open with his boot, revealing uh, just gleaming metals, uh, goblets and plates and candlesticks. Uh, armors, necklaces, and all just gold coins and all sorts of shit, uh, just valuables and precious metals and gems. Um, he kind of kicks it open. Uh, he says something to to the covenant. You can you can start to make out what he's saying now as he's closer. Well, well there's your payment. As he kicks it close again, um, stands on it, kind of turns around uh, to his men, carrying tons more of chest and other barrels and such. As the men are kind of putting their, their axes and their weapons on their side uh, and are kind of coming ashore, now laughing and, and kind of moving towards um, King Called, as, as some of you kind of recognize his name. Right. Well, the payment has been made. And for the next month, this is our city too. Let's winter, boys, and find a nice drink. And the entire crowd of the, the raiders kind of cheer out um, the Covenant are uneasy, but it's starting to uh, settle down the tensions a little bit. Um, as the man jumps off the box, and a few raiders kind of join his side and begins to walk in towards the city, as well as the other raiders. 
So, okay, I'm sorry to, to, to keep delving into this. Um, who, like, is the Covenant basically the only um, supervisory uh, kind of people of Embershore? Is there, like, um, no representative, no governor, no... Embershore is a really... Um, it's an exception uh, to the rule for, for most city-states. Most have a, a baron of some store, sort or a mayor or a margrave or some sort of leader um, or Jarl or a thane or something. Um, Embershore doesn't have it. They're run on covenants, which are basically contracts. The covenant are the sort of the... They enforce these covenants. These covenants are paid for by whoever has the money to pay for them. So if... If someone wants a substance to be illegal, they can pay the covenant to make it illegal and the covenant will enforce the law. If you have enough money, you can make whatever law you want. Generally, that means there's a few families in, in Inbershore that make all the laws and make all the rules and run the place. The, the, the laws and rules are similar to what you'd expect to other cities, just because that's how a city needs to run. Um, but it's a little different uh, from other cities. There, there's yeah, not... It's now taxes. literal highest bidder can come in and just be like, this is how it is. And that's yeah. quite literally what we just saw. Yeah. Awesome. Um, but you can now see uh, crowds of these raiders are now moving off offshore and heading to various bars. Uh, you see a few kind of pass through the lines and begin heading their way towards the market, which is where you came from. I wonder how many of them we're going to see in the copper sale. Too as many. As don't take our cable. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about this. It certainly I'm glad my matter. family's outside of town. Yeah, you're lucky, Calvin. Should we head back to the tavern then? Or? Well, it seems like the Covenant have this well in hand. Yeah. I wouldn't mind getting back where it's warm. A full chest of it well in hand. <laughs> Calvin takes a second and then laughs. As though he just got it. Because he did. You're wonderful, Calvin. <laughs> oh, I missed you. <laughs> Let's go grab our table back, and if they cause any trouble in the tavern, then we'll do something. And I, I look I over at Bald. Does it seem like he's coming along? Yeah, I think uh, it's not like I'm staying away from you guys. Um, you can see that I'm kind of just like, just like you guys, trying to make sense of the situation, just maybe more internally. Sure. Uh, so do you guys kind of back away and move towards the copper sale? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you'll, you'll head back in that direction. And as you do, you can kind of see the raiders kind of spreading out through the town. Uh, just by judging the various directions they're going, they're clearly going towards inns and taverns. Uh, there's a few that are carrying a lot of chests towards the um, the market. Um, you see the covenant are kind of the, the officers are yelling at the other covenant and trying to split up the men to distribute appropriately throughout the city. Uh, based on kind of where the raiders seem to be going. And you see most of these individuals are, are tall, broad-shouldered, strong. Um, and there's even one who uh, has green skin, these, these massive tusks, um, but who's probably a solid uh, 10 feet tall, around ball's size. You can see this ogre individual who's kind of has a just a massive club of uh, metal, this maul on his back that's kind of dragging two chests along behind him towards the market. You know, How far away are they? Uh, that ogre in particular, or just... You know, yeah, maybe that, let's say that ogre in particular. Uh, he's maybe like 20, 25 feet away. I'm just going to drag him along. Can I... I want to use my divine... Not that they're all a bit closer, but I want to use my divine sense again and just get a sense of like, are these guys... It should say kind of like, I get a vibe if it's strongly evil or strongly good. Okay, you get an alignment as well. Um, yeah, I'll tell you exactly what it says. Um, pres the presence of strong evil registers on your senses like a noxious odor and powerful good rings like heavenly music in your ears. Okay. Um, as you, as you do this, you don't sense anything sort of off the charts ping. Um, you definitely don't sense anything gloriously good. You get this kind of like foul instinct in your mind that as your runes kind of glow, uh, that these people have different moral values than you do. They, they aren't evil like uh, some of the stories of religious texts might talk about evil beings. Um, but they, they hold the value of life that they, they value differently than you might. Okay. 
Um, as we walk along, I make sure to keep either Ball or Calvin between me and any Covenant that happen to be nearby. Okay, yeah, definitely do that. Um, as you are heading back, um, you can see as you get closer and closer to the bar, uh, lots of the raiders kind of split off and go to various places. Uh, less going in the same direction as you are. Though there are a few that, um, as you kind of are walking back, um, you do see a few kind of trailing behind you and see the light of the co- the copper sail. Looks like there's only maybe three of them. As you'll kind of make it back into it, uh, you can see as you'll kind of go in, you can hear the the mood of the tavern has definitely changed. There's lots of like hushed whip- whispers. The music is kind of stopped. Lots of people kind of looking out the window. It's a def- definitely a different scene than it was before. Uh, when we go in, I'm going to go find Mogther and let him know what we saw. I I heard. Yeah. It should be okay. This is the first time they've come. You were young last time. It should be fine. Just don't engage. And Don't sword. make any enemies. Yes, you seem to be. <laughs> Just be careful. I will. As you can see, he's uh, taking some of the finer balls off the top shelf, and he's just like taking them down, holding them in under his arm, is taking them somewhere else. Got to hide the good stuff. Yeah. And do I see Sherza around anywhere? Um, make a perception check. Okay. Yeah, twelve. Uh, it's it's still pretty crowded. A lot of people have gone home. Uh, it's still pretty crowded. You don't see her. Okay. I meanwhile have beelined back to the table to make sure they don't take our seats. <laughs> okay. You move over there. There's a few people that have kind of used the chairs uh, at, so that they can kind of see out the window and closer to the window. They kind of look at you like, Whoa, what? There's an empty chair. I'll just drag it back to the table. <laughs> Uh, there's not many empty chairs, um, but as kind of the, the full gang kind of move in and the full squad kind of moves towards this table, they kind of roll their eyes as they, they kind of don't meet your gaze, but look above it, uh, get up from their seats and move somewhere else. You kind of look over your shoulder and you see Calvin and Ball kind of standing there and you're able to retake your, your table. Uh, <laughs> Calvin will uh, thank whoever gave up the seat. Maybe give him a hearty slap on the shoulder. <laughs> Uh, it's a it's an older human maybe in his uh early 40s he has kind of a receding hairline a kind of three-day beard uh looks like he's either a farmer or a miner or something like that he's a little dirty Uh, you tell he's a little tipsy as you slap him on the shoulder he like quickly like looks at you and uh swings his elbow back towards you uh that's only a 13 though as you kind of yeah. turn your shoulder to the side, yeah. kind of slams into it to no, to no avail. He kind of rubs his, his elbow. Yeah, fuck off. I and give him a playful shove in the face. <laughs> a shove in the face? Calvin starts the bar fight trying to be nice. Yeah. <laughs> right, it's playful, so it's like, you... Is this a shove or a punch? Uh, it's, just, it's, like, it's, it's like a mush of the face. It's not really a punch. It's make, like put my hand on his face and then push. Okay, make an athletics check. Okay. <laughs> um, that's my. That's a twenty-four. Holy shit! Okay, so you you kind of quickly push towards his face, <laughs> mush it back. He kind of falls back, um, slipping in his feet and kind of falling to the ground from the snow you dragged in. Um, he quickly kind of gets to his feet. His friend helping him up. You can see he looks pissed off, but his friend is kind of holding him back. He's just like, you can hear him whispering. You, you really don't want to do this. <laughs> kind of pulls him. Is trying to pull him back. Uh, I at this point, I've I've come over. I put my hand on Amson, uh, not Amson's, on Calvin's arm. I'm like, really, don't start a fight in my home, please. There's no fight here. He just kind of like looks like deadpan to the guy in the eyes. Make an intimidation check. I'm r- really good at charisma, guys. That's not terrible. Um, 13. He kind of looks you up and down. He's like, you're not even worth my time. And kind of shrugs his friend off and turns around and heads to another seat in the back of the bar away from you. 
Good job, Calvin. You got him on the ropes. Talk <laughs> <laughs> him home. Scared him away. Good job. <laughs> uh, Vesper's watching the Raiders that have followed us in. So you just okay. see what they do. Um, you'll kind of cl- close the door behind you to keep the wind and snow out. And you can kind of see uh, three individuals, very blurrily, silhouettes only, kind of through the window. And you can see several people are kind of looking up through the window. Oh, there they are. No, that's just Covenant. That's not them. And they're very, you know, talking about these approaching uh, individuals. Uh, suddenly the door, poosh, poosh, wind and snow kind of whip in, blowing your hair back um, as these three individuals uh, come in. You can see uh, there's a girl that has... Uh, three kind of scar marks across her face. You can see both of her eyes are are red and bloodshot. Um, You can see the wounds are still healing. They look fairly fresh. Um, She too has the sides of her head shaven with various symbols um, branded into the sides of her temples. Um, Any who speak giant recognize these as giant runes, Uh, though they don't actually say any words. They're giant runes kind of representing uh, strength, storm, um, sort of other like war symbol almost. Uh, you can see there's another individual who has kind of a long black beard. You can see the mustache is kind of uh, expanded and braided to the sides. Um, you can see his head is completely shaved off. He has these piercing blue eyes. Um, he wears just basic, uh, all three of them wear kind of basic leather armor. It's kind of very light. Um, they have axes on their on the sides. The woman also has, looks like a... a two daggers on her hips or her thighs. They're kind of strapped to her as well. Um, and the third is a taller than the, the black bearded man is maybe six, three. Um, he has kind of this reddish copper hair, uh, this very flat and wide jaw. Um, he has a very broad uh, barrel chest and his stomach. He kind of has a gut too. And you can see he kind of is using this uh, heavy bat club, um, it's kind of a walking stick as he walks in, kind of surveying the room. All of the, the patrons kind of clear, give them space um, as uh, the, the girl kind of closes the door behind. It's kind of quiet for the moment. You see the, the man with the black hair? Well, well, this will do. This will do nicely. And kind of approaches the bar as the three kind of move towards, take their seats at the bar. Um, you see the, the crowd kind of clear, and as they stand up and move towards the seats, which are taken by people watching them, they kind of just stand up and walk to them and get kind of right up in their faces. And you can see these uh, these poor, maybe farmers or commoners of some sort, just kind of get off their stools slowly and just kind of shift to the side and get out of their way as the raiders silently get up on the stools and get to the bar. And you see they pull, the, the man with the black beard pulls out this heavy sack of coins. Uh, the size of maybe a melon and just like pulls out and throws a few coins on the, the table. Um, as the man bun bartender kind of behind just kind of nods and starts pouring drinks. Goldsmith kind of in the back kind of like spins his fingers around looking over at the band in the corner. who's just a, a two piece set, nothing crazy. And they kind of start the music up again. The tension's a little relieved for the time being as people kind of make their way back to their seats. Uh, still staring, whispering over their shoulders about the Raiders. The scene of the bars kind of returned a little bit. Well, they seem friendly. Sure do. What? What are we talking about? The Raiders. Are we talking about anything? I, I just shake my head at Calvin. Ball spells it out for him. Ball's just like, the Raiders, they are friendly. Well, oh, that's good. Good to hear. May- maybe not friendly, but they're not hostile. At the very least. Hopefully they pay well. Mm. Looks like they do. Over chests and bags of gold. Might not be a bad idea being in their good graces. They're paying everyone so well. Hillary, how Might be a good idea. How often do you get thugs like this in this place? How often do we get thugs like this in this place? You heard Goldsmith earlier say the last time was when you were a child. Uh, not very, Not very often. If at all, there's there's sometimes unsavory sailors uh, that come into the town, but they don't come to this bar. Not not people like this, not harsh mercenaries. You have the more subtle type that might come here, but not people like this. Yeah, well, this type, not in a long time, not as far as I can remember. But uh, 
We do get some interesting people coming through occasionally. How far away from us are they? Uh, they're maybe ten feet. Not far. Um, I'm going to kind of just quietly healing word the woman with the scars. Okay. okay. Are you doing this subtly? Nope. Okay. Let me, let me check the, the components on healing word. Pretty sure it's horrible. Because yeah, if he's going to try to do it subtly, it's going to be the exact opposite of that. It's just verbal. Okay. So you say it, and uh, this kind of shimmering... Uh, what does that look like when you when you cast this spell? Um, I think I think with every spell Vesper cast, there's like little wisps of smoke that kind of come off her fingers. Okay. And um, I think she just kind of reaches out and maybe hums or mumbles something primordial and just... Okay. Uh, well, and possibly off the smoke as they close. Okay. Yeah, the, the smoke kind of pulls out of your hand as you utter these divine words in prim- primordial. Um, as the trail ends of the smoke that kind of come off, kind of shift and gleam into silver. Um, and then around uh, her face, scars, you see the same kind of shimmering silver that kind of uh, approach her face. Um, as the, the two men there kind of with her kind of look at her and just like, and they speak in this, this guttural tone. For those of you that speak giant, kind of hear them. Oh, what the fuck is on your face? And she kind of scratches at her face and kind of flails, flails around. And she's kind of looking around. Um, she kind of looks around and quickly kind of looks over to you as you have your hand out and it's shimmering the same color. And she draws her uh, sure, her axe out. Shit. I just, 17. In, oh, yeah. But I was going to try and quickly in giant say no harm. Okay, as you're saying no harm, um, seven slashing damage. You're suddenly, as an axe slams into your shoulder. Um, immediately, Goldsmith uh, kind of stands up and shouts out, hold, hold. He kind of like actually climbs onto the table. Stop, everyone. You see the, the girl standing up and she has her other blades drawn. The kind of men are standing up. They have their weapons out as the patrons have kind of cleared out a little bit away. Everyone. And Giant, I'm just like, I was just trying to help. I'm a healer. She kind of looks at you to the side. I don't need your help. Just trying to say hello. Welcome you. She kind of spits to the side. I'll give Vesper a healing word. Um, Yeah, I'll pull the axe out and just hand it back to her. (laughs) That's a six. She uh, she puts the blade back. one of the daggers back on her uh, her thigh, kind of sheath, grabs the axe from the back. She kind of sniffs the top, sniffs the top where the blood is, and kind of looks at you. Strangely, it's clear you've seen this look before. She's never seen one of you before. I just smile. She kind of smiles too. You can see her teeth um, too. There's a few of them that are broken. Um, to to one side, it looks like she was hit on that side. Um, but she kind of gives the this uh, the smile back. She kind of sheaths her her blade and puts the, eventually kind of puts the axe back down. I don't to know. He's gonna, oh, gonna put his arm around uh, Vesper and just kind of pull her away at least back to the table and just kind of like. Put a hand up and be like, "This is said like in a this is settled gesture. We're we're backing down to the uh, whoever the raider." Okay, yeah, you kind of pull her back and kind of settle back down. Um, Goldsmith's still kind of standing there. Sit down. I'll get you drinks. Let's not do this. You see the, the the two men are still have their weapons out and they're kind of just eyeing the crowd. You see the big one with the club kind of lunges at a nearby patient, kind of backs him up a bit when those get a little too close. The man but again like pours another drink, sits them out onto the raiders, um, and then pours a few over and kind of puts them towards the bar that's closer to you. Ball can actually reach um, the table's close enough for you to reach that end of the bar. It's gonna pour some drinks. Would you play some fucking music? Jesus. Or 
the other god that I also know. <laughs> so he also has the bar, uh, the band, and they kind of start the music up again in a hurry. And uh, he, Goldsmith kind of jumps off the bar again and is just kind of watching. You need to get some lore friendly curses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's an orcish phrase, actually. It means <laughs> gods damn it. <laughs> it's canon. Cal- and eyeballs, Vesper. This is exactly why uh, Cordia has that vial. You need to keep your nose clean. I was just trying to be friendly. Yeah. yeah. How'd that Sit work down, out for you? Both of you. We are. I would assume we are. Not I but <laughs> Trying to be a good welcome committee. If they don't need a welcome committee, they already had that. We need to stay out of their attention. Good luck with that. All of our personalities are the the antithesis to staying out of everyone's attention. All right, you have seen me and Ball, right? You have like actually looked at us with your eyes. Yeah, like we're not subtle people. Ball tries to kind of look smaller in his chair <laughs> or on his stump. <laughs> Ellery, you are the most normal-looking person at this table. Good gods. Did you, did you, did you need to talk to him again? No. <laughs> okay. Um, speaking of things in your letter, um, I did ha- have another bit of information I wanted to give you. Uh, um, how's your father doing, by the way? He's doing well. Right. Close. <laughs> Paris, deny Yeah, he's, he's fine. His left shield arm is still solid stone, yeah. but otherwise he's fine. You know, as good as a one-armed man can be. Uh, well, I wasn't able to find a sample, but I know where a nest of basilisks are. Great, well, no thank you. I, but, uh, <laughs> can I say this for the third time this night? What? What? A nest of basilisks? Well, yeah. I mean, basilisk blood will. Yeah, you say that like arm, right? you say that like that's just a casual, normal thing. Oh yeah, there's no problem. There's just a bunch of bas- basilisks over there. In that well, nest. it's not like next door. It's just I know of one. If we wanted to try to procure a sampling. Uh, you know, I'm going to pass on that because as horrible as it is that my father has a, a stone arm, uh, I'd rather not have a stone everything else, you know? So I'll pass, but thank you. Okie doke. You just learned all sorts of things in that tower, didn't you? Well, there's a lot out there worth learning. Like the location of basilisks' nests. Come on, you got to tell us some stories. <laughs> I don't have any stories. Oh, uh, Calvin, you're. You just okay. You don't need to tell us stories. Just give us the points, and I'll embellish on some of them and make an actual story out of it. How about that? As you are saying this, uh, Ball is kind of at the table, and you can see him kind of staring down. And how does it look when you when you do this, Ball? Um, I think it's pretty subtle. Like, it's more of just, uh, like, you know, like, how, how it is nowadays, like, we pull out our phone and we're, like, looking through our text messages or whatever. It's kind of like that where I just, like, I pull out my palm and I'm just kind of looking at it and seeing, like, I imagine, for example, if there's snowflakes falling, it's just kind of, like, from my fingertips to my palm, but I'm just kind of holding it like this. Maybe the fingertips kind of fall, from, or the snow falls from the fingertips to the palm. Yeah, small kind of flurry of small snowflakes kind of flurry in your hand. Um, Reminiscent of uh, what Orsisa did, Orsisis did um, when he was controlling weather, the smaller version of it, kind of reminiscent of that in Ball's Ball. And I get the sense that it's like the weather's going to continue as is. Yeah, it seems like it'll be like this for at least the next 24 hours to the same degree of blizzard, which is harsh. Okay, so maybe while they're discussing how it is that Calvin knows about basilisk nests. I'll speak up and say, uh, maybe today's not the best day to travel. Why is that, Ball? 
Well, other than the obvious pointing towards the door. That that's the reason. It's ah. a blizzard. <laughs> right. So what are we supposed to be holed up in here all winter? It's not a bad place to be holed up. That's right. You get alcohol and food. You just have to pay double for it because Ellery's the one in charge. And uh, you get to listen to music and hopefully not get killed by these brand new raider people. It's not that bad. Yeah, I'd like to hear from all of you that you're not going to start any trouble in here. It's the last thing we need. You I'm certain my... didn't intend to start trouble. And I'll try and keep my hands to myself from now on. You have my word that I will not start any trouble with any of these people. Calvin, Ball. Yep. What, what they said. It would be nice to not be here. I know a cave. A I'm cave? Listening. Ball, do you want us to go winter camping? Uh, I like watching Cloud's reaction here as I say it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think... Uh, I'll take this opportunity to kind of um, share a bit of what he's done during the break where he, um, and reminds you guys back of um, when we were fleeing from the dragon, that the original dragon that was injured. And there was a little cave that we were in for a little while. Well, I think half of us were in there and half of us weren't there. And Ball wanted to go exploring, but no one else really did. Anyway, I went back. Does anyone know? Has anyone heard of Gula? Yeah, actually. I I found a tribe. A, 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 a tribe? A, tri- a tribe of uh, what, Ball? I was told they were savages. I but so. that's, those aren't my words. I'm Galvin, pretty- you don't go around just talking about people what? and calling them savages. That, that's not... It's not right. That's what I heard. They're savages. Call a spade a spade, right? Heard from who? Um, Boris? I'm not sure Boris is a reputable source for the uh, worth and nature of creatures and people. Uh, well, they, you know, eat people. Oh, so, that, that, well, that is a problem then, isn't it? Kind of. I don't know. What do you call that? Cannibals? Well, Ball, what did you find, exactly? I... I don't know. I want... I want to learn of them. Well, I I know where they are. Oddly enough, kind of near that basilisk nest. Just saying. Just... I'm just throwing it out there. I would love to go gallivanting off into the wilderness, believe me, but I've got, um... Alright, let's go! No, I... I've got a dinner reservation in a couple of weeks, and I don't really want to miss it. Vesper's going on a date. No, a, Vesper is not going on a date. A dinner reservation? Sounds Vesper like has been invited to a very fancy wine club. The Marble Winery. For the fourth time tonight. What? (laughs) And trying to find the notes class at me. (laughs) Why would you be in a Uh, wine club? I don't know. Actually, they won't really give me a straight answer. The drinks here aren't good enough for her. (laughs) Drinks here are fine, but I've been invited and it would be rude to turn them down. So I'm going in two weeks. Oh, come on. Invited by who? I? Um, Klaus, which one of them invited me? Gave me three names. Or two names, I think. They They all... Both of them kind of invited you together. A a stone and lumber trader and an alchemist. Wait, why did they invite you? Just drugs. (laughs) My father used to go. uh, Lysander. So, you know. So there's a lot of uh, mercantile deals going on there. So. Uh, she's been making new friends that she likes better than us. Yep, that's definitely I what it is. Don't want to miss this. I no, I don't want to miss this. When is it? It's probably two weeks from now. 
All right, so let's, well, that's fine because uh, the area that we're going to is uh, there's a cave that's two days away. That's where that's you know that's not not even a week. So no problem, we got this. What else you got? How about we just party crash the the wine tasting thing? No, this is a very rare opportunity. And that I, sounds like a good idea. I'm not allowed to bring anyone I already asked. Oh, uh, all right, fine. I guess you can go off with your new friends. I'm sorry, you just knew they're rich. <laughs> Oh, so not only is the dagger in all of our backs, in our backs, but it's also made of gold. Precisely. It's fine. And studded in jewels. <laughs> I hope you have a lot of fun doing that, Vespa. I don't know if you know I still don't know why I was picked, so... Neither do we. Let's not find out. Well, have a glass of wine for me. I definitely will. That's like two weeks away. We can... You know, Calvin, do you really want to camp in the lizard, though? I mean, if you guys want to, that's, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'm down. Uh, Calvin's I up for anything. The morning. Oh, just, listen, listen. Getting late. We all know that we're going to do this at some point, but I at least need a few days. Yeah, you just got out, didn't you? I'm not in good shape right now, to be perfectly oh. honest. Oh, because of your diet. Yeah. Or, uh, Eat some steak and potatoes, you'll be fine. I have a just few glasses sleep of whiskey. In my own bed and I just need a few days. Of course. I do want to be perfectly clear, Ellery. It's good to have you back. We were all very worried about you. I know that and you can take care of yourself, but jail it's a big thing. I um I look down at my hands. Yeah, I'm not so sure I can take care of myself that well, as it turns out. That's why we're here. Yeah. If you Thanks. need to talk to any any of us about what happened, then we're here. If not, that's I'd perfectly fine too. Rather not think about it. I understand. You definitely need your rest though. I yeah. would like to I don't know, do something. Soon. I don't, n nothing in particular. I just, I don't want to stay a hold up here too long. I feel like I need to do something. Of course. And if, uh, if Calvin has something, if Ball has something, I'll go along. Though, don't expect me to be cheerful about it. I will complain the whole time. We wouldn't expect anything less from you. Yeah, we'd probably ask, like, what? Well What's wrong with her? Why is she so happy? <laughs> Why is Ellery so cheerful? Um, she I just must have a boyfriend. Thought about this. Um, Raiders just kind of walked into our home. In my house, my family isn't too far away. If you guys are gonna, you know, rest, we're not gonna go charging out into adventure tonight. Um, I'm gonna go check on him and at least let him know what's up. Yeah, definitely. That sounds like a good idea, Calvin. Of course. Especially if you just got into um, town. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you need to see um, them anyway. You do. Right. Um, I'll probably be around town. Um, I'll probably come by and stop by Amson's for sure. Uh, um, you know, just hit me up. I'll see you guys on the flip. Something. Uh, you know, how that how that goes. I, you see, I tried teaching Calvin some slang uh, in the last couple of years, but... Uh, Why, Amson? Why did you have to do that? Just is this take... the part where I, I do a flip? Like, is that no, 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 the other no. half? Like, do I get on the table? No, it's just or... something you say. It's just That's... something you say. Although, oh. I would like to see you do okay. a backflip sometime. That would be very impressive. <laughs> but not here, not now. <laughs> um, so as you're kind of... The night carries on and eventually uh, kind of gets late, winds down. Calvin... Uh, I assume heads out into the blizzard to go see his, his family a few hour, hour or so away. Um, Y'all could eventually kind of, unless you'll had something else you wanted to do before going to rest, um, can kind of find uh, your homes and beds and uh, find rest. 
Did y'all want to kind of meet back in a few days? Just before I go, I want to just check with Ellery and just go. Is yeah. there anything else you need before I head out? No, I think I'm all right. You sure? No. But, um, I don't know. This was better than I was expecting. And it, it's just... Thanks. Anytime. I'm here for All right, I'll see you. I'll go. All right. Um, you all make your way back to your homes, find some rest. Calvin, you go through the blizzard. It, it's late by the time you get there. Um, maybe midnight is hard to tell. Um, if if you didn't traverse this trail so often when you were working at the blacksmith, um, you may have gotten lost in the blizzard. It's very hard to see and very cold. Uh, but you are able to make it back, um, get inside. Uh, your family kind of hugs you. Everyone's taller bigger um, than they were before, but they all kind of are very glad to see you. It's like they've brought in the, the grain stores and some of the crops um, inside to kind of keep them um, from spoiling in the cold. Uh, yeah, and I let them know about the Raiders and uh, the town. They didn't already know. I don't know how if this was a planned thing or what. I, um, I, they just that's not, yeah, they they seem unaware, um, but they are they are glad for the information, uh, but they're mostly glad just to see you. They gotta set you up in your old bunk with your brothers. <laughs> sure, we wrestle for a minute. Yeah, <laughs> wrestle a little bit. Um, yeah, your brothers have gotten uh, taller, uh, but so have you. Broader. Um, so the the next couple days go by. Um, the next day it's blizzard like this the entire day. The day after that is a blizzard like that the entire day. Um, it's very hard to get anything done. Um, go outside for, for longer than a few, um, maybe an hour at a time before you need to go back inside, um, to avoid frostbite. Um, the day after that, it kind of slows down a little bit. The wind isn't as high. There's still kind of sleet occasionally but it's it's no longer a blizzard it's kind of light snow um and slow to moderate wind instead of the high winds before the kind of wind kind of breaks a little bit um, as is the blizzard and you guys can at some point kind of on that on that day on the fourth day kind of find your way back to each other um probably at the copper sale that you could meet anywhere Gonna meet back up to figure out what you want to do next, where you want to go. Honestly, I'd kind of be up for looking into either Ball's Cave or maybe the Basilisk Nest. I'm not sure. We might not be equipped for that kind of thing, but uh, yeah. Definitely Ball's Cave, I'd be up for. Where, Calvin, where is your cave? Uh, it's. Shoot. Uh, it's. It's in a cave known as uh, Naj Gulch. Did I pronounce that right? Close enough, yeah. Um, does I guess uh, like do we? I assume we have some form of maps or something, right? Um, you'll have a, a vague understanding of the the region. Okay, so maybe more specifically, Calvin, Paul's kind of asking you, um, in what direction is the cave? Um, Calvin. You know? The cave to be uh, northwest of Embershore, about two days travel, kind of into light foothills. Uh, there's kind of some rocky terrain there. And the cave seems to be set amongst that. Ball, and you also know, and the rest of you know as well, is that cave with the boulders where, where the dragon was found um, or landed. That cave or that boulder and cave is about an hour outside of town. And that is. Uh, almost directly south, maybe a little southeast towards the coast. Hmm. Mine's closer. And Bob kind of gives a little smile. Well, before we go anywhere too far outside of town, I'd kind of like to see how Stonehill Abbey's coming along. Uh, sure, we can stop there. But other than your guys' association, is Stonehill Abbey like a big deal? 
it's not an enormous um well calvin wouldn't know but the for the rest of you it's not an enormous temple but it, it is kind of significant that it's the first temple uh, to Aiyin in Embershore. Okay. Let's go. Right. I'll lead the way, I guess. Okay. Um, so kind of head north back to one of the main thoroughfares and then head west towards the west gate, uh, coming outside of it. Um, and just maybe 50 yards out, on a hill, uh, just outside of the gates, uh, is the stone temple to Ai. Um, it looks like it's well made, and Ball and Vesper, you kind of had some hand in its in its construction. At first, it was uh, a wooden structure, and eventually made the transition into stone. Uh, it's not huge; it could probably hold twenty to thirty people max um, in it. Uh, the ceilings aren't super tall; they're maybe fifteen feet tall. You see there's an outside kind of a stone area uh, with stone pews, uh, actually, where before there was even a wooden structure. This is just basically where um, some teachings were read. And eventually the stone, the wooden structure came and eventually the stone followed on top of that. It's a simple, it's a simple temple. There's a few windows, but there's no stained glass. Uh, there's a door. It's not iron. It's just reinforced wood. Um, does it look like it needs to be kept up a bit? Like, I mean, I imagine during the few days I would have visited it and maybe tried to, you know, like shovel the driveway. Yeah, there, there was, there's a lot of snow even now, but, uh, yeah, you could have over the past couple of days kind of clear out the main walkway, uh, the stairs kind of leading up the hill as well as that kind of almost a courtyard with no walls outside of the temple. And kind of clear away any ice that formed on the inside. Uh, there's several columns along the side. There's six columns, three on each side, leading towards the sort of pew at the front or the back uh, with the altar. Okay, so maybe I'll kind of do that while, um, I don't know, maybe uh, you're giving a tour of some sort. That's fair. Yeah, definitely. She's very proud of this, obviously. And uh, your father is there as well. There's and um, he's kind of that? hello he's on the ladder actually he's kind of halfway up it uh, kind of dragging his stone shield arm um, using his other hammer uh, with nails in his mouth kind of trying to fix some shingles that came loose during the blizzard uh, on the top of the roof uh, um, you need us to help you before we head out oh got it you kind of okay. he's he kind of, in that dad way, kind of hears what you're saying, but doesn't really hear what you're saying. Like, he doesn't recognize that you're heading out. He's just kind of worked. All right. Uh, well, I'll see you in a few days. Okay, I'll Where are you going? You know, <laughs> around Calvin's back, so, you know. Hello. Hello, Calvin. Ellery's back. Good. I'm kind of holding... Towards the back of the group. Those two, yes. He's kind of mating, making his way down the ladder. He kind of is walking over to towards He's, the group. He says that in a way like, oh, those <laughs> troublemakers. <laughs> yeah, definitely has that inflection. He's just like, oh, great. And he looks over towards you, Ball. Where are you going? To go see the gula. You're serious? No, you're not. You're not. And he kind of leans over and looks at Vesper as he says it the second time. Well, the it's, on our, it's on our way to another fun, exciting location, so... Yes, to Basilisks. He kind of... I was just out. nodding along. Yeah. Uh, Ball, you're sometimes a little bit too honest. <laughs> he looks at his arm, and he, he just... He's trying to struggle to find the words. You're not going to find the Gala, and you're definitely not going to go deal with Basilisk. Do you see this? And he kind of points to his solidified, petrified arm. That's why we're, That's why we're going. You're not going on my account. Well, Father hasn't been able to get any more of the blood in, and... For good and peace, the dangerous... You're not the first to try to go find him. And you won't be the last to not come back if you go. Well, 
we dealt with, you know, a dragon and a Volgrith and all kinds of things and came back, so. Yeah, you've run course of your lucky. And what if you're not lucky? What then? then? I guess you'll have to hire someone to help you out around here. You know, I thought over the couple of years you've grown. I thought you might have learned something. It seems you haven't learned a damn thing. I just... She just kind of looks at the ground. Listen, if it was my legs or my hammer arm, I'd go go to the basilisk nest myself. It's my shield arm. I can live without it. It's fine. Don't go there. You won't come back. And then I'll go to try to recover you, and I won't come back. And then it'll just be Lysander. And then everyone, all the covenant, all the commoners who come to you for healing, to me for aid at this temple, will find empty doors. Don't be afraid. Okay. I'm going to look at Calvin and Shrug. Roll a persuasion Wait. or a deception check. Uh, okay. Persuasion. Um, it's 15. Good. Just don't know. Okay, it looks at you. It seems satisfied. Calvin, very good to see you. You're looking well, sir. Blessings of AI upon you. Thank you. I'll kind of pat Vesper's shoulder and say, uh, maybe we'll just see the Gula instead. Okay. I yes. definitely didn't promise not to see them. You can see in giant. I'm saying it in giant. Okay. You can see his um, stone shield, his Varus, is kind of turning back to kind of go back towards the ladder. He kind of looks over your shoulder. Um, and you're not sure if he didn't hear it or if he's pretending he didn't hear it, um, but he goes back to his ladder and begins climbing it up again, putting nails back in his mouth. Well, that went well. Uh, I mean, he had a point, you know. People rely on me now. It's not like I'm just a kid running around with your friends. I'm a part of something. Yes, just a kid hanging out with your friends, killing monsters in the forests <laughs> and caves and things. And... Taking care of Jack. Uh-huh, that's mm-hmm. right. Sorry. What most kids do. Mm-hmm. Riding right. dragons. Mm-hmm. Underwater. Any help you have for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did anybody by any chance put on or make an attempt to put on the copper? Uh, yeah. yeah, I was going to say, uh, Vesper has a scale and she also has her wings. <laughs> <laughs> the wings are barely holding apart. They barely did before, and you probably had to retie them, um, but right. they can hang on there. The The scales, anyone that wants to apply it, um, the hardest would be if you were applying it to armor, but you could easily do that uh, or fairly easily in the last couple of days. If you're using leather or cloth, it's even easier. Just a, just a stitch or two or uh, the tie of leather to, to strap it on there. I'll attach it to my um, to my armor actually. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you can tie it on there with. The yeah, I've got it. I've got my shoulder. Okay. Um, I've attached mine to the inside of my cloak, so if I have it like kind of flipped open a little bit, then it's visible. But I can also have it so it's not showing. Yeah, just in case you need to stay incognito. No, officer. I've never seen these people before in my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, you don't see. Uh, you don't see Paul having you know display anywhere but you are standing in front of the temple it's still probably early morning maybe nine going on ten uh, the sun's out lot light wind light snow flurries nothing crazy um, as you're standing on the hill with this uh, new temple this being repaired for the blizzard shall we get uh, so- s- some camping supplies then i have rope and i'll Pull out my giant rope. You see, there's two uh, large fifths of rope. Pack. And the rope that Ball pulls out is uh, like a shipping rope. It's thick. <laughs> like it's, it's a good, like, four inches thick. It's it's uh, not your small, moderate rope. This is like a mast rope. Uh, wow. Well, if we ever need a lot of rope, then uh, 
Uh, Ball has us covered, apparently. Were you going to say <laughs> Are- something, Ellery? Aren't we exactly at 100 <laughs> speed right now? Uh, there's some RPXP I have notes on that I'll give after the session. I thought he just got downgraded to level zero. So <laughs> yeah, you're, you're back <laughs> in zero. <though. laughs> thank you, thank you. You are so gracious Hi. and kind, Mr. DM. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the plan? What are you doing? I guess we're going to the cave? Yeah, Ball thinks we're headed to the, the cave that he was at last. Well, I'd like to go inside first. I think we're still outside, right? Yeah, uh, but Vesper did show you, um, kind of do a uh, quick tour of the inside. Uh, okay. Three stone columns, and there's uh, wooden pews throughout. Right. Looks like maybe right, holds 20, out. max 30. I'm, altered. Maybe I didn't get inside. If Ferris, you know, was outside, I probably stopped and talked to him, and so if Ellery wants to go on, I can show her the inside. Yeah, if you, if you go in, that's, that's what you see. Um, it's not fancy, but it seems sturdily constructed. So, um, am I the only one who thinks that your dad was not terribly happy to see me? No, I actually think he was a bit, uh... He had that tone in his voice that was like, uh, oh, these troublemakers, not you again. <laughs> see, I thought he He's was just saying, oh, it's it's you two. Oh, it, you know, it's been a while. I'm not the one who drags no. everybody else into trouble. Calvin's the troublemaker. Ellery is just trouble. I wait. Hold on a sec. Let's get something clear. I did not make Ellery. Oh, Calvin, your that. your infinite wisdom astonishes us yet again. I just shake negative five thousand five hundred XP. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> All right. So, do you get a lot of people coming through here? Decent number. Mostly Andrew Covenant and Choppers and locals. Any kind of uh, regular services or? Um, good question, Cloud. <laughs> you have like, but no. Uh, Varus, Varus. Has tried to set one up, but it's it's slow to come. But he's got one enough to where um, once a week they they put on a, a service. Um, there's only two other individuals besides you and Ball who help out at the temple, and and not a whole lot, but but enough to kind of help him out with basic. Um, they can do some very basic healing, you know, if someone has a cold or sniffles or something like that, the sprained ankle, um, the heavy stuff, you know is left for Varys and then yourself. It's still a growing temple. It's still a very uh, small scale, but it's starting to, to get bigger. Uh, yes, I'll tell her when the usual service is. That's not very much, but you know, if it turn out slow enough, you will cancel it. That's it's uh, certainly looking sturdier than the last time I came by to visit. That's thanks to Ball. He's been helping out a lot with the stonework. That's how he got all of his manly muscles. <laughs> Grow a whole feet, uh, three feet, helping us out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you ever do want to just stop by, though, you're welcome, always. I'll think about it. And if you want to sit in the back of a service and not have me tell anyone you were here, that's fine, too. Uh- Think about it. We'll we'll get Ellery up front with the choir. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't think you should start a choir though. <laughs> uh, might might help the turnout. Maybe. So, um, are you all having this conversation while following Ball? Oh dear God, I hope so. Okay. Yeah. That's not really <laughs> yeah. So you're you're following Ball, probably Ball and Calvin, kind of up front um, as you are kind of chatting. Uh, it is actually. Surprisingly faster to just go around the city gates um, if you wanted to do the faster route, uh, whether entering the city and then exiting again. If you'd like to do that, you can walk around the outside of the gates, kind of going into the forest off the road. There's no trail here, but you kind of circle around the city down from the west side to the south side uh, and kind of heading back into it again. Ball or Calvin, whoever's leading, I guess Ball, give me a survival check. Do the advantage. You've you've been here 
twice and it's not that far. Okay, 19. Yeah, you're you're head in the right direction and you easily, without too much issue, run through it. You do manage to avoid. You remember the first time you, you saw it and you saw it the second time as well, Ball, when you came back. Um, there's this weird geographical place uh, where there's kind of a very small clearing. It's only maybe 20 feet, 25 feet in diameter where there's three pools of water and there's three uh, like stalactites, whichever one come up from the ground um, of uh, looks like rock uh, thin, maybe only three, four feet tall that come out of these pools of water in a triangular formation. And the ground there is kind of uh, the plants are dead. There's a tree right on the edge of that vicinity. It's like the tree is completely dead, um, charred on one side. Uh, closer to this area but uh, with that check you know where it is and you can avoid it if you desire uh, okay yeah um in the past i haven't avoided it what did i like you i guess why would i want to avoid it you avoided it but you f saw it the first time and didn't know what it was and walked around it and when you came back you saw it again didn't know what it was and walked around it and you kind of know where it is now and you don't really know what it is uh, but if just basically steered clear of it. Um, I think I like pass near it, not through it, but just like I think I would want my party members to see it. Uh, maybe okay. even ask. Maybe when we get there, since I'm walking with Calvin, I'll ask Calvin. Um, do you know what this is? Do I have anything? Um, make a nature check. Calvin, do you get advantage on nature checks for certain things? For certain things, what are uh, those? not nature specific? Uh, I don't think it's nature specifically. It's, it's survival like intelligence. and intelligence. Uh, nature is intelligence based. Uh, which oh. which things do you get it on? Like fiends, fae. Uh, it's fae, fiends, and oh, shoot, where did undead. I had to ask. Undead. Undead is the other it's one. It's just those three. Okay. Um, just roll a regular check. Regular nature. Well, uh, it's probably a 11, I believe. You've never, you don't know what this is. You've never seen it. Um, yeah, yeah, you have no idea if it's just like a natural phenomenon or, or what it is. You have no idea. I just give him a shrug like, I don't know. <laughs> Me neither. Okay. Almost there. And then I'll continue on. Okay. Um, as you're continuing, Ball, do you have, did you pick up one of those ember stones? Uh, I think someone picked one up. I might need a refresher. What were these ember stones again? Uh, they're the stones underneath the water um, on the coast of Embershore that glow that orangey yellow color. I don't think I took any. I think I did. Okay. Um, I as, as you're circling, it, do you have it on you or is it in your bedroom somewhere? Yeah, I'd probably bring it or go and keep spelunking, you know. <laughs> okay. Uh, where would you have it? Is it just in your pack? Uh, yeah, and I pull it out so you go into the dark. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, you get it in a more um, accessible location. I uh, don't really think of anything of it. Uh, but as you are kind of walking near this, you feel warmth. And as you kind of search to feel what that warmth is, you see the stone is uh, warmer than usual. It always has a slight warmness to it. And now it's uh it's bordering on hot, not enough to cause pain or anything, but uh, it's it's warmer and it seems to the pulse seems to be a little more rapid. Um, so this is doing something. And it just does that while you're walking by. As you kind of go a little further away, it kind of goes back to normal. Still glows, still warm, but um, sort of calms down a bit as you go away. And then maybe close to it again. But if you walk back, it does, it kind of heats back up. Pulse rapids. How close do you get it? So this is getting. I'm gonna walk right up to it. Okay, like into the center. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the closer you get to the center, the faster and hotter it comes. I'll just. I'll let the know this. <laughs> it's getting hotter. Uh. Think, only did, because. Did you alert anybody or? Did... Yeah, I'm telling you guys this is happening. Uh, only because Melly isn't here, I'm gonna try an Arcana check on the stone to see what kind of 
magical nature about the stone would cause this reaction. Yeah, sure. I'd yeah. like to do the same. Okay, both can roll Arcana. Sweet. I got a uh, 21. So okay. 15. Okay. Uh, so looking at it, um, both of y'all can definitely tell it has something to do with the proximity, obviously, which means something, some sort of energy is interacting with it. Uh, you know there's... Both of you would uh, know there's some sort of residual energy in the stone. Um, that's as far as Ellery gets. But Amson, you kind of take it a step further and understanding if there is residual energy in the stone, if there is, um, it is interacting with something else causing it to pulse like this, that means there is some sort of energy, residual or not, in this vicinity. Um, there's no runes to really ascertain what type, arcane, or divine or, or natural energy, um, but you do understand now that there is some sort of uh, at least residual, if not active, um, energy in the proximity of this location. You've heard of maybe way lines before, and you don't know if this is that or some version of it, but there are areas where the magical energy uh, just flows stronger, and perhaps this is it. Then that is what I will tell Vesper and by proxy the rest of the party. That there's some sort of magical energy in this area and it's reacting with the stone. And and I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um so mm -hmm. so Vesper is kind of standing in the center. Where are the rest of you just to get uh sort of approximate marching order? Uh to see the stone I would have been right next to Vesper. Okay, so you get up in there as well. Yeah. Uh, same. Ellery would have been the same. Uh Bao and Calvin, are y'all kind of on the edge or did y'all kind of walk back to wait on them? Um, I think I'd still be on the I would have walked back, but I'd be probably on the edge of you know, like uh I because my goal was to kind of walk around it. So I would okay. have just came back to see what everyone was up to, but not necessarily walk to the center. Going to the, okay, so you're on the edge of it. Um okay. Uh, and Calvin, uh, where did you end up? Uh, just with Paul. Not, okay, so just not too far from him. Perfect. Okay. Um, so as you are there, um, and you're kind of looking at this, um, you all start to know, uh, hear some, you kind of look around and the, uh, three, uh, small spires that come out of the pool are starting to spark. You see, uh, little, Bolts of energy kind of swirl around the stalactite and reach the top and kind of and ionize in energy. The hair kind of stands back um, on the back of your necks as you see these energy um, increasing and the wind in this area begins start to rotate as you see that sparking uh, becoming more rapid um, and often. Suddenly, you see uh, coming out of these three um, spires, you see electricity sparking out. Uh, forming forth, uh, the energy kind of billowing and spiraling uh, into a, a swirling storm of wind, lightning. And you see these like stones almost, these galvanized stones that singe stone the top part, uh, portion of a skull begins to form. A body almost serpent like of electricity runs down, uh, twisted and spiraling with a strange iron ionized electrical energy running along the elongated body as four limbs of clawed lightning uh, kind of sprout out of it. Upon the back of the creature are four wings of the same energy of lightning uh, running through a net of iron resembling wings of a dragonfly. Blue energy streaks out of the eyes uh, back over and down the creature's spine to a spiked tail that kind of whips around as these three creature uh, creatures come forth. Everyone go ahead and roll initiative. What are these? That's a natural 20 there, so 23. You got a natural 20? I got a dirty 20. Nice. I got a I think I was muted, so that's 15. Uh, 13 for ball. Um, can we retroactively change some titles around? Like noted that uh, Calvin isn't so much the shitster or let's jump into shit as maybe somebody else in the party. I don't know. I just feel like he hasn't done that as much. I don't know what you're today. talking about. Really? Uh, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just off. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Calvin is the group protector along with Ball uh, to tell the truth. 
<laughs> yeah. We're um, doing a fine job of it outside the uh, circle of doom that you guys have stepped in. <laughs> All right, Calvin, let's go to that cave. We'll uh, catch up with them later. <laughs> See you guys. We're going to go kill basilisks. Have fun with lightning dragonflies. <laughs> yes. I bring them all. <laughs> Basically the size of a dragon. Oh, cool. Damn. <laughs> He's almost twice my height now. Now Ellery really wants Ball to be her boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so um, as you all had the chance to kind of watch these creatures form out you're not entirely surprised Vesper um, you had the first go you, know, you have no weapons out but you do have that stone in one hand what would you like to do I'm going to fucking throw the stone <laughs> at, okay. towards the, the other two so it's out of the circle okay uh, you can make a uh, dexterity base are you throwing it at one of them, or just throwing it out of the circle? No, I'm just throwing it out of the circle. Okay, you can easily throw it outside of the circle. Um, far enough to where it's outside oh, of here. Did uh, you want to keep moving or stay where you? I would love to move. I would love to. Okay, to you throw it out, and the glowing is still at the same intense uh, pulsing. And I'm just going to get out of there. <laughs> okay. Um, and unless you have a bonus action, that'll be your turn there. Uh, no, that is a bonus action. Uh, yeah, I'm going to cast Shield of Faith on myself. Okay. What does that look like, the, the shimmering energy that kind of comes to protect you, that divine energy? I think, again, it's also kind of very smoky, and it's just this very, like, white, almost glowing kind of smoke okay. that sort of... Yeah, so that normally dark, blackish gray smoke that kind of forms coming swirling out of your hair uh, sort of becomes silver and glowing, uh, this kind of goldish silver color of it. This kind of envelops um, swirling around you in a protective uh, formation. And that will bring us up to Anson. As you see Vesper, throw the stone out, get out of the circle as these three uh, electricity creatures are uh, flying, floating above the spires. All right, so let's see here. Uh, the wind has increased. You can see um, pulses of, of ionized energy are now kind of in the vicinity. Okay. Um, I'm going to uh, get out my uh, rapier and okay. run uh, let's see here uh, the 30 feet towards Vesper so that I'm beside her. And okay. Uh, since the ball is on the opposite side, I'm going to, as a bonus action, inspire him with a song that I'm pretty sure I haven't sent him yet. Um, think a ball, think a ball fondly, mighty and noble. Remember ball, once in a while, you'll save your other song. And then you'll find that this great mighty man was once an orphan, said it's true. But now you have a family with these friends round you. So cutting through the, the wind ball, you hear these words uh, expiring your resolve. As Amson runs out of the area. Um, uh, and then for my action, I'm going to uh, hold an attack with my rapier uh, in case one of these things gets within melee striking distance of me. Okay, so you get into a stance ready to strike should one come near. And that's uh, my turn. Okay, and as you're holding there, um, the galvanized energy that's rotating quickly, the wind kind of picks up. It's actually picking up stones along the ground, and the energy, uh, ionized energy, is kind of pulling around them, and it's rotating this wind very quickly, uh, just in the general vicinity um, of of this area, maybe the thirty foot diameter or so, um, and that picks up um, as this creature, the blue um, electrical energy uh, creature. Uh, floating above one of the these three spires, the triangle of spires, uh, is going to shift. It's going to fly 
to the right and then down towards Vesper um, as Vesper and Amson are right next to each other. Let's get, get right up next to you, Vesper. You see electricity kind of pulls in its hands as it slaps its hands together as it op- releases out of its mouth a uh, a bolt of lightning that releases straight towards you. I need both Vesper and Amson to make dexterity saving throws. Oh, boy. Oh, well, 11. Both of you just barely make it. Um, as you try to yes. attempt to dodge out of the way of the lightning, you are successfully duck under it as best as you, um, as best you can. You still take, however, seven reduced to three lightning damage as it just surges through your bodies. Oh boy. And that will bring us up to Ellery, as you see this flying creature electric group, um, or lightning bolt to your friends. Okay. So I am first going to move away from that, uh, down out of the circle towards and a little below where Ball is standing right now. Okay. Down to... Out of the circle... Here. On Calvin on the other side from Vesper and Amson. And I am going to cast Mage Armor on myself. Okay. Shimmering arcane energy kind of glosses over you. Does it does it look like anything in particular? Does it form like sh- rotating shields around you, or does it just cover your army armor with an arcane magical layer? Um, I think it just it's more like just a, a a layer over me. Okay, so suddenly your armor is uh, shimmering in arcane energy as you step over there. My lack of armor is shimmering. Yeah, you're you're close. <laughs> um, anything else? Um, no, I think that's it. Okay, this creature is going to come right here, and it as well is going to just. Uh, release this arcane lightning bolt um, in the direction of Ball, and uh, just Ball needs to make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, that is nice. not enough to make it. You try to duck under it, but you're far too large to get out of the way uh, quick enough, um, and you take uh, five lightning damage as it releases into you. Um, as it kind of retreats back into the center of the circle where the wind is kind of enveloping around it. And that will bring us up to the last one here. It's going to get right there. And Ellery, go ahead and make a dexterity save as it releases its lightning um, in your direction. 19. 19. That will definitely make it there. And so you take, instead of instead of 12 damage, you take 6. All the damage on that. So you take 6 lightning damage um, as it releases into you. And that will bring us up to Calvin. Actually, he's going to move one step back. Trying to get back towards the Is Ball gone? Yeah, is it Calvin's turn or Ball's turn? Ball has Ball should go to uh, Add five. Oh, I'm sorry. Ball, what was your initiative? Thirteen. Thirteen? Okay. Um, the green shouldn't have gone just then, but I'm going to put you above the red. So, yeah, go ahead and go, Ball. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. Um, so, seeing this happen, I'll... Uh, I'll run down to this one over by Ellery, and I'll motion or I'll motion to uh, to Calvin to take care of the other one, and put my big fat body here, and just take out my great sword and try to swing at it. Okay, drawing it out, coming down. A nineteen. Nineteen will definitely hit for eight damage. Okay, so you smack into this thing, and though there is a lot of um, lightning energy surrounding it, there is a physical structure of Ino stone as you slam into the back of this flying dragonfly serpent uh, looking electrical uh, energy. And do you want to stay where you are? Yeah, I think I'll, I think I'll, I'll sidestep one to the right, so I'll end my turn there. Okay, and as you get closer, the hair is standing on the back of your neck, both from the creature and that, that spire. That will bring us up to those two, and then to Galvin. Right. Well, Singh has he had a, uh, an effect on with his sword. I will pull out my swords, uh, my hunting sword and my wakazashi katana thingy, 
and uh, whackety whack. Let's see, first. That is a 18. That'll hit. There's a hunting sword. And, uh, ooh, um, a 24 for the katana. Both hit. You come down two quick strikes towards the creature. Damn it. Really? Uh, that's nine slashing total. Okay. Slashing into it quickly. Um, you kind of knock the creature back. Um, about a foot as it's flying in the air. And do you want to stay where you are? Um, I'm going to shift down one and then, yeah. Okay. And that will bring us back up to you, Vesper. This flying clutch for a creature flying in front of you. Well, good. I'm going to draw um, my rapier and I'm going to try and flash at it, I guess. All right. That, no. That's an eight. No, that will miss. Yeah, you strike at the creature, but it flutters quickly, flies above it, above your strike, coming to rest back uh, face to face with you. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, I think that's all I can do right now. So. Okay, and that will bring us up to Amson, and you're kind of standing behind Vesper as she tries to strike at this creature, but it's too quick. Okay. Um, seeing as how the other two are occupied with Ball and Calvin. I'm going to run around Vesper and give the lightning dragonfly thingy a wide berth. Come up beside it and stab it with my rapier. Uh, okay. Do, do, do. There it is. Uh, that would be a 15 total. That'll hit. Sweet. Wait, we're basically stabbing this thing with lightning rods. <laughs> yep. yep. Center of maths. Yep. Striking in her. Uh, that is nine points of piercing damage. You strike straight through your center of mass into where its heart might be. And as you pull back, um, you see kind of energy enveloping some stone in the center of its core. All right. And for my bonus action, I'll inspire um, Vesper. Uh, as promised, like two months ago. Cast in, read in, and heal in every day. That's the prayer that the Vesper girl prays. Thank Cain that she's here this day. Casting, reading, and healing every day. Nice. We're going to need to get all of these put on an album. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, I'll look into it. <laughs> <laughs> Tunes of the Bard. Done by Amson Armsblossom. <laughs> Copy, you... There's absolutely no copyright infringement at all. <laughs> it's all parody. It's fine. Um, so as in, as in you sing that out to Vesper, who's right there, as you strike it in, Vesper, it's partly the song, but partly seeing him strike through the creature of this, um, the center of this creature, kind of saying, okay, we can do this. And that will bring us up to the storm. The energy begins to uh, circle uh, more rapidly around in this area. And you actually see the ionized energy on the three spires uh, begins to build up and you see the top sparking heavily. And uh, almost in that, uh, those items and Spitzer skiffs shot, these hands, uh, little fingers of ionized lightning are kind of reaching out and kind of reaching out to nearby trees or rocks on the ground before they dissipate. Uh, nothing yet though. And that will bring us up to this one. In front of Vesper, turning back towards Amson, who's the one that struck into it, um, it's going to, underneath, it's going to release um, under its body, its tail, trying to stab you as if it was a spear um, ah! towards you. That will be a 19. Uh, yeah. Uh, There's going to be three piercing. Oh, my. And four lightning. Oh. Ah! It strikes into your center, the electrical piercer on the end, striking into your uh, upper shoulder, and pulling it back. I don't look so good anymore. And that's going to bring us up to Ellery. Now, you're standing kind of far outside of the circle as Bao and Calvin, Calvin have moved into it, and Amson and Vesper are kind of on the edge of it as well on the other side. Okay. Um, so I'm going to move off just a little bit, and then see how a firebolt works against these things. 
Probably not very well. Twelve? Oh, towards uh, which one? The green oh, one? Uh, sorry, towards the green one, yes. Uh, that'll just hit. Okay. Ah, great. Have to find another D10. You conjure up this spell. You've cast many times before um, a bolt of fire as you release forward in this ray of flaming energy, slamming into the creature. It tries to duck out of the way, but isn't quick enough. You catch it on some of its uh, left wings. So that's a, just a one. You seem like you damaged one of the wings, but it's able to maintain flight with the other three pretty well. It did feel it. And that'll bring us up to Ball. As the heart um, flies by your head, slamming into the creature next to you. Now, you said that these these uh, stalagmites, they're kind of like spires now? They've kind of risen out of the ground? Uh, the spires haven't shifted. They were kind of like very thin stalactites, but what's changed is the, the energy has increased. The lightning energy is now flowing quicker and is sparking out the tip of the stalactite and spire. Okay, um, so recognize this. I want to take my blade and I want to try to break the stalagmite. So just kind of just because it, it's you said it's kind of like tall and thin ish. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to try to, I guess, no, like look for some kind of weak point and just try to slice through it. Make an attack roll. Uh, did you roll a 19? No, no, that was the last one. Um, this time it's a nine. I'm going to use my inspiration. Okay. So I think a 1d6. Is that right? I believe so. At this level. Uh, yes, it is a 1d6. For 11. You uh, bring it back and go in a wide arc, a horizontal arc, slamming into it. And you, uh, some of the rocks kind of go flying. You chip off some of it, uh, but it wasn't enough to break through it, um, the hard shell. Okay. Um, I guess that'll be it for me then. Okay. You do feel like if you were able to hit it hard enough, you might be able to break it. It's just you weren't able to hit it hard enough. Um, right. at the right spot there. And that will bring us up to the red one here who is going to claw out towards you, Calvin, um, reaches a clawed talon-like arm. And that's only a seven as it reaches towards you. You kind of use your weapons to parry it away, the arcane energy just kind of crackling in front of you. And that will bring us up to the green one here. It was just slammed by Ellery. And... Uh, or nearly nearly singed a bit by Ellery is going to kind of uh, shift up just a bit and is going to turn and ball while your back is facing the creature facing towards the spire um, it is going to try to strike you in the back of this table. 16. Um, matching my AC is a hit, right? Yes. Yeah, so that will hit. Okay, so just barely. It strikes into the back getting up under the, um, the armor just a bit. You take three piercing damage. All right. And one lightning damage. All right. It strikes into your back. And that will bring us back up to, actually, as a bonus action, it's going to, I forget it can do this. It's going to, and for a moment, it's a very small, beady, um, marble-sized bolt of blue energy, and it's lightning um, bolts across towards the center um, of the area, reforming on the inside um, of the circle, the very center of it, bringing us up to Calvin. Uh, well, things are moving. I'm going to, I like what the ball's doing, so I'm going to move 10 feet up towards that spire, but I'm still going to attack. Uh, just just to remind you, we're going to still do that flanking, so you would get an attack of opportunity if you did that. But you, you can certainly, oh. just to remind you, okay. since we're testing those rules out still. So. Um, Which you can do either a five foot shift or use all your movement. Okay. Well, Shucks Howdy, I'm gonna let's see what happens. I'm gonna I'm gonna just yeah I'll take the damage and I'll just go straight for the spire then. Okay. Well, it has to hit you, so uh, that's a thirteen. Nope. Okay. So the tail you hear um, by your head, you kind of duck instinctively, getting over there. And I'm gonna try to swing with both of my swords at the spire. Okay. See if that does anything. I like what he does. Okay. Uh, it's the first one is a fifteen plus six is nineteen. That'll hit. And the other one's a twelve. That will not hit. The first one hits with little damage. It's nine pier nine slashing. Okay. 
So as you strike into this, you hit it uh, pretty hard in the top part of it, uh, kind of cracks off and shifts, uh, falling into the pool. The electrical energy at first kind of burst out everywhere. Uh, go ahead and make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, I'm so good. Oh, I don't think I do good. But still, seven is not going to get very far. You take three lightning damage, but um, after that initial burst of lightning energy, the top part of the spire falls into the water, um, and that energy seems to dissipate somewhat, and the storm seems to wobble and slow down somewhat. And unless you had something else, that will bring us up to Vesper. Okay. So um, I'm kind of imagining like the smoke is curling off of her, and it's like this white gold. Um, feeling bolstered, Vesper kind of almost catches like a strand of it in the air, and I think it maybe turns black as she does that, and almost forms like a bell, and I'm going to cast Toll the Dead, like, like, my marine, this little smoke bell. Okay. And I'm casting it on the blue one right in front of me, which I think is a d12 if it fails its wisdom save. Toll the Dead. Yes. But it's a wisdom saving throw, or it takes necrotic damage. Uh, 1d8 normally if the target is missing any of its hit points, and instead takes 1d12 necrotic damage. Okay. And Thanks, that's Anastar. a wisdom. Uh, that is a 13. That just means it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so um, as it hears this, the, the sound kind of rings out um, from this bell formed by gold and then black um, smoke energy. Um, and the creature kind of washes over at the sound, but it doesn't seem to shake its form. Okay, and can I cast the bonus action spell? Or? Um, that's a cantrip, correct? Yeah, sure. well, but that's a cantrip. Yeah, you can cast a bonus okay. action. An all-healing word, uh, Amson. Okay. For, hey, for uh, seven hit points. Hey, thank you. Mm -hmm. So you, you whisper a divine word as some of his wounds heal up um, from the strike of the tail into his shoulder. And that will actually bring us up to Anson. Okie dokes. Uh, feeling much better now. Thank you. Uh, save my last inspiration, but I'm going to stand. I'm going to take a five foot shift over here so that uh, the lightning thing is right in between uh, me and Vesper. Yeah, you have it flanked. Its attention is divided. Excellent. Cool. So I'm going to stabby stab. Okay. And it's advantage. advantage. Yeah. That's not bad for a first one. That's worse. So that is a total of dirty 20. That'll definitely hit. All right. And eh, five points of piercing damage. Okay. You strike into this creature and uh, this elemental energy um, creature is starting to waver. It's the energy is starting to become wild surrounding it, sparking out from its form. It's not as compoundly um, kept. Um, it's starting to dissipate almost, but it's still uh, controlling itself. And that'll be my turn. Okay. Um, the storm is still swirling around, um, though it's slowed down from one of the spires being taken out. Um, and that one actually... Let's see if it gets its lightning bolt back. It definitely does not. Um, it is going to, looking at you who just injured it, is going to strike at um, the claw, and that will be a 15 to hit. You, Amson? Uh, 15 does hit. Okay. And that will be six slashing damage. Oh. Uh, slashes across, as well as one lightning damage on top of that. Back down. <laughs> Thanks for the healing. Oh God, got healed. <laughs> but it's gone now. And it is going to, after that, suddenly shift away from you in a flash of bolt of energy, going deep, delving deeper inside of the swirling miniature storm. Uh, that will bring us up to Ellery as the wind and ionized stone and dust and energy is swirling around in this vicinity. Um, so looking at the three of them in the middle there, can I tell which ones are the most heavily damaged at this point? Uh, it's kind of hard to tell. It's not. It's, there's no blood, so it's not as easily recognizable. Maybe the top one? The, the energy seems a little bit more wild with that one. Okay, so what I'm going to do in that case is cast 
acid splash at the blue and the green since they're next to each other. Okay. Um, is and that attack roll or deck save? That's a deck save. Okay. So that is a 15? Uh, 15 makes it. Uh, the second one rolled a natural 18. Um, uh-huh. So as you sling the until the wind kind of is attempting to pull it to one side and then twists it away, but it does get there and explodes into a um, acid energy kind of flowing around. Uh, these creatures are able to, to quickly fly away from the acid. Dodge. Um, then with that done, I am going to go right down below where ball is standing. Okay. So you go down to the southern edge of the ring of the circle, and that will bring us up to Ball's turn. Um, how do the fifteen foot cones work again? Especially if I am. Where does it originate from? Um, you can choose the, we'll say the left or the right square in front of you, and so it'll be, yeah, you could you could potentially hit that one. Uh, so I was going to probably move over. Um, like if I let's say I was over here, where would and uh, so if you if you started it on top of the creature, uh, you could make it to where all of them would have to make a save. If started on the right, only the top two would have to. Okay, but Um, if I do it on top of the creature, it'll also have to hit Calvin, right? Yeah, yeah. So you either hit all three of them and Calvin, or just two of them and Calvin's okay. What if I was here? Um, You could hit all three there. Okay. Um, Then I want to do that, and I want to use my my rune weapon, which is a fire. Okay. Um, and that's a deck save, I believe. It's a deck save, that's right. So the first one... For DC 13. First one doesn't make it. Second one doesn't make it. Third one... Third one, the last one makes it. Uh, okay, the so first two it, don't. It's 12 damage if they don't make it, and 6 if they do. Wow. Okay. Uh, so as you release <laughs> these, these flames... Um, the, as you release it, it wipes the creatures out. And as the last bit of their energy is released, they all explode. Um, and just you, it's just enough to where it's going to hurt you. But otherwise, how do you want to do this? How, do, how does this look like as this rune energy wipes these creatures out? They explode in elemental energy. Um, um, like? Well, I think maybe what I'll do is uh, basically I'm getting ready to take another swing at the spire, seeing the success that Calvin had. Um, and then when I see suddenly the two of them kind of shift and teleport closer to Calvin, I'm going to take my attention out and just kind of go back and try to charge this group in the center. And as I do, um, maybe I'm kind of like doing like a battle cry. And as I do this battle cry, um, maybe just like from my outstretched hand with my sword out, just kind of my sword's in one hand with the great sword. My second hand just kind of has fire emit from it in this cone and it just kind of cooks them. Okay. Some. Yeah. And as if the battle cry rouses up the flames, they roll out of your hand, wiping like a wave against uh, these creatures, crashing them um, against this, this cliff face of flames, uh, scattering the various ionized stones to the wind, uh, falling to the ground. The energy releases in a burst um, and you take three more lightning damage, but otherwise the three, creatures and their what's left of their stone and iron form kind of fall to the ground um, in piles of ash. The the storm is still kind of billowing somewhat, but it's definitely calmed down a bit. And uh, slowly over the next minute or so, the energy fades, the wind dies down, the sparking of the spires dies as well, and quietness takes this part of the forest once more. I want to go pick up the stone that... Uh... Vesper threw. I think she threw it towards us. I don't recall if it's right. Yeah, it was in that direction. Okay. So you, you can go over um, to pick up the stone. Everybody it... alright? Uh, not so much, no. Could use uh, a hand here. Yeah. I don't really have 
any spells left now, but... Uh, I will drink one of my uh, potions of healing. Okay. Um, if I want to take a bit of a break, I can patch everyone up. So if we take a short rest, I can do my, my medic feature. That sounds like a good plan. Oh, my good idea. Um, does the stone feel still hot like um, uh, Vesper was describing it earlier? Um, yeah, as you as the others are kind of figuring out what they need to do, Amson drinking a potion, you go over, pick up the stone. Um, you feel it's it's warm and it's and it's pulsing. And um, as you kind of pick it up and look at it closer, you see it pulse again, fade to where it's not glowing, pulse one more time in a glow, and then the energy fades. It doesn't glow. It's not warm any longer. It's just a stone, and it kind of looks like maybe glass, like amber glass, uh, mm-hmm. but it's not glowing or anything any longer. I'll walk back to the party and maybe I'll hand it back to Vesper and say, uh, "I think you broke it." Great. She's not really paying attention. She's getting all her medicine, medical supplies out. Um, and when Ball walks over, I kind of flinch a little bit. Um, maybe what. Like- Ball might pause for a second, but I just continue with what he's doing. Okay. Uh, does Ball need my medic? Uh, yeah. Yes, please. I literally missed by one on yours. I'm sorry. That's right. Um, yeah, but for everybody else, I passed. I got like a natural 19, a natural like 15, and then like a natural 14 plus 7. Um, so the rest of you can take your full hit die. Really. That's perfect. Brings me back up to full. I literally I got a seven <laughs> for balls, so plus seven is fourteen, and my DC is fifteen. Ah, uh-huh. but... so close. Okay, so as you are kind of settling down, sitting down to patch your wounds, um, fix yourselves up. Um, and figure out what's going on and prepare yourself for what comes next. Uh, that's where we'll go ahead and end the session. Mm. Call it there. Pick your up next week. GG. 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 So good to be playing again. Oh, I know, right? It's like on D&D withdrawal. <laughs> <laughs>